Hello. I would like to begin this episode by thanking some folks, folks like Abe, Jay Paddock, and Ian Alien. These are people who have gone to patreon.com slash duckfeedtv and kicked us some money and really, really helped us out. You can be like them by going to patreon.com slash duckfeedtv. Thank you. My name is Gary Butterfield. My name is Cole Ross. You're listening to Watch Out for Fireballs. It is a Games Club podcast. And this week, for our first episode of the new year, uh, we are talking about What Remains of Edith Finch, which is a first-person adventure game developed by Giant Sparrow and published by, published by Annapurna Interactive for PC and contemporary consoles in 2017. And Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yeah, 2023. What a concept. Yeah. Uh, here we go, baby. <laughs> it's on. Yeah. Uh, this is a coal pick. Uh, we, mm-hmm. we wanted a shorty because, full disclosure, we're recording this before Christmas break. <laughs> Everything is out of order now. We recorded yes. the arcade responses before the arcade episode. We're recording uh-huh. this before the dispatch comes out. Yeah. Everything is effed up. This Caps. is these are the kind of flexes we have to do to take a little bit of time. <laughs> not to not to woe is me or anything yeah. like that, but time has to literally be turned on its side uh, <laughs> to uh, to take a week off uh, yeah. for the Yule for the burst of the Christ, Christ child. The burst, <laughs> the, the burst. Well, <laughs> we, we weren't there. Par Noel. <laughs> um, the uh, yeah, and and uh, we're doing a we're doing a shorty, but this has been. Uh, if we think about it, since we're recording this this year instead of uh, during 2023, mm-hmm. what a year 2022 has been for WAF and walking Sims. I know, right? Yeah, we, we've done our, this is like all of them are good. Mm-hmm. Like it's really hard to fuck with devotion. Very much you know, so. In, in a general sense, we don't have to fight them though. Like everything's an A. Yeah. You know, it's just degrees of A. Like this is a great game. Mm-hmm. Really, really good walking sim. Yeah. Uh, yeah. they like that they, they solve a lot of problems. And of course we get into something that we have talked about a lot and we are finding, uh, many examples of this is a video game, short story collection. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That all leads up to a piece, mm-hmm. like a short story, a themed short story collection. Yeah. Um, it's also one of the things I was thinking about, uh, playing this is I was trying, like, I really, really like this as a, a walking sim as a alternative to a visual novel in terms of just being a novelistic experience. Yes. You know, I'm not trying to just like fight my Pokemon or pick on visual novels, but they accomplish similar things. Yes. Right. Like, and I, I just think this is a more video gamey way to do it. It takes it advantage. Feels, yeah. Takes advantage really, of the medium. Yeah. It actually uses the tools that are available to it. That's a good point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. so it, it just, it's, it, at first, I was like, why do I like this so much? And then I cannot stand a visual novel. And that's why. One's a uh-huh. video game. Yeah. You know, and I like video games. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is a great one. Yes. Uh, so in this, you play as a young woman named Edith Finch, uh, who returns to her abandoned childhood home to learn more about this supposed family curse that causes everyone uh, in her family to die these very unfortunate deaths. Yes, the uh, the royally fucked tandem bombs is the uh, is this whole crew. Uh, it is an eccentric crew of doomed weirdos. Yep, a uh, very clumsy. Yeah, yep. The uh, uh, so there's not 
really puzzles or rigor or mechanics of this. This is we're in the gone home space where the uh, the degree to which your agency and your play determines your outcome is how much do you explore and what details do you pay attention to mm-hmm. as you're exploring the house. Uh, and getting sucked into these episti- epistolaries, mm-hmm. these uh, various mediums that will tell you the story of a family member. Yeah. Um, uh, the way that this solves uh, kind of a common problem that I have with these, and I talked about a little bit about this in Devotion. Uh, I think that handles it pretty well. But the way that this leans into the fact that it is a primarily textual experience by just making uh, the text elements part of the 3D world to kind mm-hmm. of guide you and show you what the character is remarking upon uh, as you are going. The, I think that those are used very tactfully to uh, kind of uh, pull your nose in the right direction in a way that does not feel intrusive. They pull your nose in the right direction and you listen to them while you can read them, Yes, which means they can, if you, if it wants you to look at the fridge, but you are trying to see what kind of brands of flour this family uses because I love fictional brands, brands of a uh, flower. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can just listen to it and it yes. uh, has audio log appeal. Yeah. Uh, this, this does not really yank the mouse away from you. No. Yeah. Very, very, very rarely. Uh, does it do it? The, uh, what little kind of navigation challenge there is, is in finding these hidden passages in this very quirky, uh, house, yeah. uh, full of sealed off, uh, memorial bedrooms. Yes. Uh, where dead family members uh, have been memorialized, their bedrooms kind of frozen, mm-hmm. you know, at the moment preserved as little shrines to them. Yeah. Uh, each of which, again, contains one of these little vignettes, which will take you into a, a slightly different gameplay mode that talks about how the family member died. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, I am. I am suddenly struck by the fact that one of the main mechanics in this is basically a verse from the Blink-182 song, Adam's Song. <laughs> yeah, t- tell me more. <laughs> No, just you know, it's a, it's a, it's about a, it's about a teen who kills himself, and then the mom it just a verse like, "Oh, she's going to oh. close your room off, seal it, seal it up," you know. Oh, yeah. that's what happened to Adam. Yeah, that's what happened to Adam. I never yeah. got to the end of Blink One Eighty Two. I <laughs> I started listening to them, and then I got distracted by playing something else. <laughs> so it's on my list. I understand everybody loves it, and it keeps ending up on <laughs> list, but I just never got around to it. <laughs> It's just a, you know, you know it's a, it was a, it was a song that was that was out and sad when I was a moody teen. So yeah, yeah. we they, uh, they, they they also the ones who did Jumper. No, you're thinking of um, Third Eye Blind. Yeah, that's Third Eye Blind. Uh, yeah. Blink One Eighty Two is the uh, uh, what's my oh name? Gosh. What's my age again? Yeah, what's my age again? What's, what's my age yeah. again? Yeah, those little punks. Yeah, those little yeah. punks. Yeah. Those little guys. Those guys. Yeah, those little goblins running around being Blink One Eighty Two. <laughs> <laughs> singing about suicides <laughs> you know just like little keebler fuckers going about their business uh yeah, yeah i remember them yeah I, I love navigating these uh hidden passages it's real clever oh, the way they put it together what a dream and house if not for the curse if not for the curse <laughs> i would i would be you know I, I i doubt i could afford this because what this house also uh implies is just staggering generational wealth yeah. uh, <laughs> so you gotta you gotta kind of pit you know uh uh, glaze your eyes over at that uh but uh gosh this house that is just every service is a bookshelf and like there are multiple modes of ingress and egress to any given space just secret passages i just yeah. need the one i i've told this story before but i'll tell again real quick my ex's uh parents had a beach house that had a secret room and i was so excited and then when they showed me inside of it they just kept paint cans in there <laughs> <laughs> Such a goddamn bummer. Yeah. Like, <laughs> just like, <laughs> just why pull, did you do that? <laughs> just, just just pull down a candelabra and, oh, it's our yeah. old moving boxes in case we need to move again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's it's uh, b- boxes of oily rags. <laughs> the, uh, oh, paper waste. Okay. Um, yeah, it was just a huge bummer. I, I obviously, I want a uh, secret passage. The other thing about this house that is kind of fun is that it looks like it's just going to fall over. Uh-huh. It's, it's built like a Jenga. Yep. Tower, uh, but somehow doesn't. I would also like a house that has that kind of magic. Yeah. You just, uh, you, you know, <laughs> you want to know if you, you know, just, you want that little bit of danger. You want to gamble. Am I going to wake up yeah. in a pile of rubble today? Yeah. Or not wake up at all. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> that's the kind of gamble I love. Yeah. Um, the, uh, so yeah. we're going to talk about those vignettes when we get to them. Cause that's the, uh, that's the, the game. 
Yes. You know, that that's yeah. the that's the body of the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, but generally, this is a short story collection or short poem collection. We get mm-hmm. these scenes uh, talking about how people died, uh, really specifically about how they died. Yes. Um, I think that's that's worth noting here. The the important thing about these people ends up being how they died. Like that yeah. is the mythology that mm-hmm. your character knows uh, yes. about them. This is weirdly like this is a game. We'll, we'll get into wrap up theme stuff, you know, when we get uh-huh. to the end, but a game about death mm-hmm. in, in no small way. Yeah. Um, and, and very specifically to me, not about life. Oh, explicitly um, not. And that is the main yeah. problem with the, the person who could arguably consider the, the, be considered the antagonist of this Yeah, is like, what a fucked up way to remember uh, yep. somebody. Right. Uh, yeah, th- this this really rang true to me as a type of person, yes. you know, or as like a type of outlook. Like my mother, before she passed away, uh, was very death focused. So mm-hmm. all of the people in my life who who died before she did, uh, the week before, the week after would be very, very difficult on her. Mm-hmm. And it was genuine. <clears throat> she wasn't doing what the, the character in this you know, story does like yes. I, I have sympathy for her yes. uh, for that, but she was just very, uh, it was, it was pretty much non nonstop. Yes. Like I really, you know, I, I wanted my mother to feel better yeah. uh, and not forget, but like, you know, you're not going to forget. Mm-hmm. Right. Like it's, it's not a crime to live right, right. after a death. And uh, I feel like that is kind of what this game treats with. Yeah, you know, somebody who th- feels like you are dishonoring the dead by being alive, when in fact that's what they would want, and also mm-hmm. it's inherently virtuous. Yeah, to uh, to to not do that. Yeah, like the, the 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 story and narrative in this is on one hand, like the the the, the tweeness of everything makes it all feel kind of direct and a little bit tongue in cheek, you know. Mm-hmm. But like, it, if you kind of look past that Wes Anderson presentation on some of this, you end up getting like a real nuanced, you know, just kind of question what what is the curse here, right? Like, yeah, the, and just what is what does this kind of outlook do to people who are surrounded by it, and it, notably you know, everybody who dies ends up dying. Like this is all in and around the house to a degree (laughs) or like related to family stuff. Like none of these are independent people who go about and become anything of their own really. Um, Yeah. yeah. There's a lot to those kind of, and if, if, if anybody knows this as well, I've also known people like this, like families that kind of have this gravitational pull that where like nobody breaks free, Mm -hmm. you know, like, and, and in any way, Right. Like not just it's not just, you know, intergenerational households and stuff are great. Like I'm not yeah. bad mouth and you know, you let your grandma live with you. I'm not saying you, <laughs> you fucking villain. Uh quit staring in the face of death. I'm not saying that. I'm saying people who just don't form any independent identity outside of family. Right. You know, there there's a kind of a vibe to that and a sadness to that. Yeah. Uh yeah. that can happen. And if a member of that family or if there's something about this family that is toxic, it can feel like very explicitly like a curse. Yeah. You know, and that's even putting aside like any actual intergenerational or inheritable mental illness and stuff, yeah. which there's a metaphorical read mm-hmm. uh, in this for that as well. But yeah, you know, depression does seem to run in this family mm-hmm. uh, pretty, t- pretty intensely. Yeah. Yeah. But like the way that it ends up manifesting is as like a Wes Anderson or uh <sighs> What is uh, uh the, the 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 kind of like super cute movies from the early two thousands? Tendercore Michelle or whatever. Gondry? Yeah, it's like kind of Michelle Gondry. Michelle Gondry to it. Yeah, it's like, like a Michelle Gondry. Um, um, uh, oh gosh, like Southern Gothic kind of thing, except yeah. in the Pacific Northwest, right? It, it's got a little bit of sugar to make the absolute bleakness go down. Yeah, like yeah. I ordinarily that kind of tweeness would bug me. Mm-hmm. Uh, here it's fine because if it didn't exist, this would be you know, actual sunlight or whatever. This would, this would be relentlessly <laughs> depressing. Uh, we got child deaths, baby. And oh we boy. don't got one child death. We got them, you know, two for one, three for one specials. You are not walking out of this game without some child death. I guarantee it. Uh, and it would just be <laughs> real sad to do that baby bathtub thing uh-huh. without there being some whimsy in there. Yeah. Um, yeah. It'd be a t- t- tough pill to swallow. It'd be bit. the kind of, it, it's what devotion works its whole game up to. Yeah. And you couldn't, you couldn't, couldn't make that one sixteenth of your game or whatever, yeah. uh, and not have it be a little bit lighter touch than that. Yeah, I think. Yeah, uh, uh, tonally, I think this really lands it. 
Yeah, uh, I, I mean, primarily by playing into kind of a magical realism uh, kind of deal. Like, this is explicitly influenced by, like, 100 Years of Solitude. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, th 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 things like that. And, you know, so you get those really heightened details that both, I think, make some of the bleakness go down, but also, like, introduce a fair amount of ambiguity into it because a lot of ambiguity yeah yeah like you're reading this epistolary and then playing something like nobody knows what that baby thought what actually happened what i did in that scene could not have actually happened right yeah you know so yeah. like just uh there's there, there's plenty of places where this reaches about like 80 percent, and then you can decide which way the remaining 20 percent stretches yeah and it's also it's the narrative you know as a, a a story about a family's kind of lore Mm -hmm. Right. Like it makes sense for these stories to have um, this outsized kind of tone yeah. to them. Like this is this is family lore, yeah. you know, self-perpetuating family lore, mm -hmm. but it's it's family lore. It's 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 a death that you that you do not get to play. You do not play the deaths of anybody who married into the family. Yeah. Um, but like there's a grandpa who, you know, the you know, the great grandma uh, jokes like, oh, he was killed by a dragon you know, telling this story, you know, so in this really fabulous way, uh, the detail is, oh, he was building a dragon, dragon shaped slide and it collapsed on him. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but yeah. still that became the story, right? We don't know how much of it is that, yes. you know, and the people we know who married in the family, rest assured they died. Oh yeah. But we just don't get to play a fun little game about it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Just a newspaper there, clipping you see. Yeah. The, there is, a, there is an element to this as well about death coming you know, to us all like this, yeah. this is a, a, a game about death, but death closer to how it presents than how it does in video games. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's not a, like a realistic death thing. Cause a lot of these deaths are pretty fantastical. Yeah. Any one of them could set off a hereditary or set off a devotion. Mm -hmm. Um, all of them in one place is very magical, mm -hmm. you know, is, is, is kind of suspicious and, and unusual. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's still closer on that thing than death in doom, <laughs> you know, right. or even, or even big plot deaths that happen in video games with like a canonical death. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's, it's even, it's less fantastical than that. So it, yeah. it just really, really rides a line. And I, I can see, uh, this is again, getting into kind of fun, final summation stuff. I haven't read anything about this game because I knew we were going to do it at some point. Mm-hmm. I would be would not be surprised if this flips too far the other way for some folk. Like Elaborate. some people, uh, this is this is too twee and too cutesy, mm. and ends up feeling kind of wrapping around to feel almost disrespectful. Hmm. You know, to feeling uh, almost light touch, like too light of touch. Yeah. Yeah. I can kind of, a you know, I can almost imagine that, especially with somebody, if somebody's coming into this, expecting something that is a, uh, expecting a devotion, like expecting yeah, right. something that is more, um, or relies on less coincidence, mm -hmm. I guess, to, to make its plot right. happen. What's more you know, about it, agency. It gets but... funny at a point, <laughs> you know, like at a certain point, it's like, yeah, how did this fucker die? And it yeah. just... It's so relentless. Every uh, single person, just bam, 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 accident, 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 uh, that it, it does have kind of a comical effect that it threaded the needle perfectly for me, but I can imagine yeah. it pushing it a little bit too far for someone. I'm too, I, like, I'm too internet poisoned because I just imagine just somebody sliding into it, like a tweet reply to this game and say, oh, well, that's all well and good, but you never had a baby die in the bathtub. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, uh, we, that girl who didn't sent, got sent home without her supper. What if she was a vegetarian? <laughs> um, yeah, I, uh, that kind of shit. Yeah. Yeah. It is. So just avoiding, avoiding stuff like that. They, they did a little bit of like, so, so we, we've made a, a, a few references to the baby, to the baby bathtub death. Like they had that idea and Annapurna specifically was like, ah, we feel pretty dicey about that. They brought in parents to like play it and, you know, mm. just basically figure out, I don't know if they like went to a support group for baby bathtub deaths. <laughs> to, <laughs> oh, just sure. like hold them in and be like, all right, so how's this go? But like yeah, there was a Ducky's support group. Yeah. <laughs> I know those guys. <laughs> like, we call ourselves rubber duckies. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a way to name the pain and therefore control it. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so, you know, th there is at least some kind of like outside consulting. I have not read that take that this is uh, that this is a little bit too kind of capricious about mm -hmm. it. You know, 
um yeah that's not something that i, I don't know that it exists it, yeah. it just i can almost imagine it because it is right. you know it's dealing with big things in a sometimes silly way yes you know yeah difficult needle of the thread that i think they landed mm-hmm. uh aesthetically the visual design in this is really good uh, mm-hmm. like the vignettes change things up quite a bit. Uh, I love, I mean, we'll talk about it, but there's one that is just an EC comics kind of thing that's that great. ends up becoming interactive. Like what a wonderful idea. Yeah. That's, that's a real, uh, real standout there. Um, and because it's a short story compilation, if you end up in one, that's kind of not that great, mm-hmm. it's fine. You yeah. know, they're not all knocking it out of the park, but wait a minute, you'll get to another one. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's relatively uneven, but it definitely stands on the strength of, for me, one in particular is like yeah. completely best in class. Like, oh my God, this is why it. video games ex- ex- exist yeah. kind of thing. We all know yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. The, um, yeah. And then a bunch of them are just good and some of them are kind of lame and it's fine because they work in aggregate. Yes. Um, the house itself is very fun to explore. It's less interactive than a lot of these like there are mm-hmm. secret passages but generally just kind of push forward yeah you know uh it, it's going to easily draw or obviously draw comparisons to the house and gone home mm-hmm. gone home had more secrets yes to it than this does uh that was more about exploring the house there's an element of this to exploring mm-hmm. the house and you do get to go through somebody's room and see what they were like yes. which is one of my favorite things to do in a video game mm-hmm. um so that that ends up working. Uh, one thing that I really wish uh, game designers would do mm-hmm. when you have a arty literary family like this, they should not own as many copies of the same book. That's I understand. Thing. I understand like why it happens. Like you have to reuse the book texture. Mm-hmm. Do you though? Like <laughs> maybe you could just cut like, I don't know. It feels like it would be relatively cheap mm-hmm. to, to come up with just the, just the spines. We're not talking about covers. So you don't have to do art. You're just doing text and fonts. No. Uh, they have so many copies of the same books. Yeah, it's like you don't need one for every room. It's wild. And, and the and the like the, the the books are generally like appropriate for the person uh, whose room they are in. But it gets down to like okay, there's so lots this of is, overlap though. This 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 is the kids. This is the kids' book room. So there's Hardy Boys in there. Yeah. Well, then, but then you end up running into like one Hardy's Boys. Uh, just kind of leaking into the garage or whatever, yeah, you know, yeah. um, yeah. there are containment breaches all over the place for the Hardy boys. <laughs> <laughs> the fence is down. <laughs> you got to cock up your bookshelf or else you're going to get, you're going to get Hardy boys on the walls. Cock That's up everything. Yeah. Got to cock up your kid's room. Yep. Uh, everything gets cocked up. In, but, in yeah. Pinch. Yeah, that maybe that's what the mom was trying to con- trying to do with yeah. that great stuff. She's been foam. straight cocked up with the corpse <laughs> wax she puts up and the 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 Lindell corpse wax she puts up. <laughs> oh gosh! Uh, so the studio is pretty arty. Uh, they did the unfinished Swan uh, before this, kind of an indie darling. Uh, uh, it's mostly known by its first level, where it's pure white and you navigate. You you see the space by throwing ink around to uh, highlight stuff. Um, it is annoying to, uh, read these people talk about the game that they're making because I kind of wish they'd just make the game and let it speak for itself a little bit. Yeah, (laughs) I would agree with that. Like they, they, uh, they, they, they talk. Yeah. Um, did you, have you played the unfinished one? I played like the first stage of it and I was like, ah, I feel like I get it. Same. I I thought the whole game would be that like, and it would have puzzles and stuff. I, Mm -hmm. this was, this was on me. Like I didn't look into it enough. This isn't on them, but I was expecting like a portal. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I thought, I thought like I was gonna do like you know uh, <laughs> solve puzzles with that mechanic, which I thought was really cool. Yeah. Um, but now it's a walking sim. Yeah. Um, and it also ties into this. Yeah. One of the characters from this uh, went on to become the king in the unfinished one. Mm-hmm. Um, they talk about this. Uh, their goal is capturing this moment of finding something beautiful but overwhelming. <laughs> Thanks, Chad. Uh, they- <laughs> <laughs> Jad uh, wants to to do that. It's kind of beautiful. Uh, <laughs> beginning with how the creator felt about scuba diving. Yes. Um, so they're going to make a game about scuba diving. Uh, but then they're like, this this doesn't work. Uh, and then they were like, what if you became a shark? You know, mm-hmm. the ultimate scuba diver. Yeah. Uh, and then that and- didn't work. And then eventually that became one of the scenarios in the game. They reused the scuba diving shark. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, instead of trying to make one overarching thing okay we can't make a scuba diving or an entire game about a shark work so what if we do this short story collection kind of idea uh and this went through a few iterations initially it was set in a high school i'm happy they didn't mm-hmm. do that yes. um and uh uh then they went with the cursed family 
uh, on the first try, like like when they first started showing this off, it was much more horror horror oriented. You know, you had a flashlight, you were going around, it was dark, and I think some of the bleaker stuff was a little bit more foregrounded in it than it is here, which is a lot softer. And and that would would make a kind of sense. Like Cursed Family makes me immediately think of Edward Gorey, mm-hmm. you know, and that kind of tone, like a gothic tone. Yeah. Um, I think it's probably good that they backed off. Like I would have played that game. Yes. Uh, but it would have been very different. Uh, same uh, same same way that like i'm happy that uh gone home didn't turn into a ghost story like i thought it was going to going in blind yeah. you know yeah. i love the idea of them starting off with that scuba diving game and uh then doing a shark game and then like opening up you know game spot and seeing abzu and then seeing man eater and be like <laughs> fuck we have to make this beautiful meditation on death um, we can't do our our scuba diving game or our shark game <laughs> Um, so, uh, this game is, uh, you know, so they got most of the way through the dying, that design the house, uh, and they want the house to be a character, you know, of course. be, a, be a, a force of, of nature there, but then very late in the game, uh, what the, the, the highlight story that Cole was referring to earlier uh, yeah. is the one where they realized they could use the kind of decor and clutter to tell the story of the character, which is, which is wildly wild. late to realize that. Cause that, <laughs> that's old video game magic. It's like you know, oh, oh, space spaces communicate things about people. No, uh, I mean, do like what they carried, you know, like there's there's this is a very famous, yeah, uh, you know, kind of idea. But I'm glad they did, yeah, because uh, it helps. You know, it it's not super deep in that. You're not. I would hazard to guess. I would say that there is less. If you take away the vignettes, there is less information about a character in a mm-hmm. room in this than there is in the average apartment in deus ex mankind divided yeah, yeah which is sounds damning it's really not it's just it's a secondary concern mm-hmm. they get most of their stuff across in the vignette yeah um but it, i'm glad they added like a soup song mm-hmm. of it yeah just do do a focus pass on it just like okay yeah. the, the like the this can be unique to the person right yes yeah uh, uh game is very well loved yes yeah. uh extremely well reviewed nominated for several awards uh, I think it won a BAFTA, um, and it was six. BAFTA six, these uh, nuts. <laughs> <laughs> BAFTA you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's been ported to a number of things. Like this is a game that uh, uh, they're very interested in keeping alive. Yeah, uh, I was going to play it on the Switch, and then I f- it was on Super Sale. Yep, on Steam uh, recently. So, uh, and also before we get into it and spoil everything, uh, recommended. Mm-hmm. This is a uh, walking sim. It's two hours yeah about like a little bit over two hours it's the length of a movie um i think that's really great for a walking sim yeah uh you know games that uh tell movie like stories cinematic stories oftentimes are let down by the the tension in trying Mm -hmm. to be like what does a zombie apocalypse movie look like if it's 13 hours long yeah you know well it has a lot of weird fights in it um (laughs) this game does not do that yeah so it's it's a it is movie like it's it's being cinematic uh, in an interactive movie in a way better than things that are called interactive movies do. Yes. Agreed. So play it. Uh, also, I'd be interested to see what they're doing next. Mm-hmm. Um, they're working on a game that focuses on the enchanting beauty of animal locomotion. Uh, okay. okay. And then they're going to see stray and be like, shit, we're just going to have to walk in sim. <laughs> God, damn <it. laughs> God damn it. We got man eatered. We got abzu. We got strayed. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> which one which one of you hasn't been checking the rss feed <laughs> <laughs> the, the, uh, okay i'm gonna need you guys to go online let's uh let's get into it let's talk about this uh this crew of royally fucked assholes and weirdos <laughs> and some of them are assholes some most of them are great yeah let's yeah. let's talk about these weirdos yeah uh so we start out uh, where our character is sitting on a ferry out to uh uh this island orcas island real place uh, mm-hmm. uh you know the started out in the puget sound here headed up north um and our character we can just kind of look around when we look down we see that they are holding a bouquet of lilies so obviously for somebody who's di- who's dying or dead um um, and they also have a journal that they pull out and start reading. Uh, and you can see that their right hand is in a cast. Uh, yeah. 
yeah, that is that is information, but it, it 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 reveals like yes, this is not the person that we end up playing as, and also hey, klutzy family, here we go. Yeah, yeah, they, they're lucky they got to keep that arm. Yeah, <laughs> um, and it begins with this narration from from a lady uh, says a lot of this isn't going to make sense to you, and I'm sorry about that. But first, we have to start with the house. Yeah, um, we're reading the diary, so it's an epistolary within an epistolary. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Um, and we flash back to walking towards this huge surreal house, uh, very bizarrely structured. It looks like a, uh, sideways stories from wayside school or yeah. like a, uh, you know, Shel Silverstein house. Yep. Yeah. Um, literally like it's, it's a Jenga crumbling, wobbling Jenga tower mm-hmm. yeah. you know? with m- uh, many yeah. additions and layers on top of it in a pure uh, mechanics feel, I was very worried at this point because you walk very slowly. Oh my God. You walk so slow. <laughs> you walk real slow in this game and you can't sprint, but when you press the sprint button, you zoom in. So, <laughs> so it looks like you go faster looks, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, and this first part, it really wants you to have this like somber mood. This ceases. Like this is something that can kill a walking sim. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, everybody's gone to the rapture can absolutely lick my bridge, yep. uh, largely because of walking speed. Yeah. Um, once you get inside the house, it ceases to be a thing. Yeah. And you're, you're going to spend most of your time in vignettes, which like do not have this problem. Right. Yeah. The, in the house, the uh, the environments are so small that uh, speed does not really factor into it uh, at all. Yeah. Yep. Um, and the narration continues, you know, saying like, Hey, you know, I got this key at my brother's funeral. Uh, her mom, uh, Dawn had told her, you know, you'll know what that'll, you'll, you'll know what, what it opens when the time comes. Right. And her mom has just recently, just recently passed away. Yep. Uh, she never thought she'd come back, but she gets the house and she has questions that only the house can answer. Um, you know, you can look down in this. This is a game where you have a body. Uh, you look down, you can see that you're a pregante, <laughs> uh, and your hand is not in a cast. Yes. Uh, you're with baby. Does the baby have a cast inside the womb? We don't know. <laughs> they, they just um, them at this point, <laughs> unclear. <laughs> the, um, so we go to the front door, the key, which the key will not open. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can try this key on, at the beginning of this, we're going to try this key on a bunch of stuff. Yeah. So we have to sneak in like we did as a kid, which is crawl in through the doggy door. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, here. Uh, and now we are in this, you know, very cluttered uh, house that is in a state of disarray because, you know, people packed up and left quickly. Right. Uh, there's mm-hmm. a calendar here that shows that the house has been empty since January of 2010. So roughly six or seven years. It's actually in pretty good shape for a house that's been empty for six years. It's incredible shape. Yeah. <laughs> like no, no squatters, no raccoons, mm-hmm. you know, like it's uh, it's it's in great shape. Yeah. 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 Um, and you get into the kitchen and uh, every surface is covered in piles of books. Uh, I, I, I love I love this kitchen that has that is just full of canned fish. Uh, yeah, it, it's it really it made me think of the uh, before version of this. That was a horror game. <laughs> like there's something wrong with somebody like a family that just eats tin fish constantly. Yeah. Like nonstop. Yeah. Uh, but- and this gets explained even as you're walking through this now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so what, they say her, Lewis brought home a lot of fish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And you're, it, like, you're getting lots of small details. Like you, you see some Chinese takeout from the last meal that was here. Oh, there's only one uh, only restaurant that delivers to this house. So we ate a lot of Chinese, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that makes sense. Mm-hmm. You're in rural, uh, rural Northwest. Yeah. Um, the uh, You can see that the library uh, is sealed here. We cannot get into that. And we uh, we find out uh, somebody named Edie, not Edith. Edie mm-hmm. used to tell me that every finch that ever lived is buried somewhere in the library. Right. Uh, obviously metaphorical. Uh, their stories yes. are held up there in some ways. It is hilarious for a house with this many bookshelves everywhere to have a library. Yeah. It exploded. <laughs> uh, like it, it's It's leaking. Yeah. So, um, uh, we get more information you know, just about Edie's, like, or, or uh, uh, Edith's uh, uh, immediate family. Like, her brother Milton disappeared one day. Uh, so, her mom uh, started sealing up all of the doors, uh, just kind of as a way to process her, uh, as a way to process her grief. Uh, and great grandma Edie retaliated for this sealing things off, you know, sealing away the, uh, the old spaces where people had died or where people were memorialized by drilling peepholes so people could look in. Yeah, like a little museum. Yeah. You know, uh, the order of events was confusing to me for a second. So I thought these peepholes were there when people were like alive. Yeah. And I was thinking that's like, oh, it's it's no masturbation house. 
<laughs> like, that, like no kid gets to grow up in this house because you never get a moment of privacy. Old grandma could be looking in a peephole on your bed at any time and you wouldn't know. <laughs> what a fucking nightmare. <laughs> I, I just, uh, I really imagined a horror story in my head. <laughs> It like, is the, gr- the the grim promise of the panopticon. Yeah, like made <laughs> made manifest by grandmas everywhere. Um, <laughs> um, so you head upstairs. Uh, every room is sealed off, and we can look in these rooms and get a little preview. Mm-hmm. You know, like uh, this this is worth doing just to kind of get a sense. Uh, yeah. But we can go into un- uh, Great Uncle Walter's uh, room, which is sea themed and largely empty. Um, the key that we have will open a padlock on this wall, which reveals a hidden passage. We're in hidden passage times. Uh, so, it, and you say it's time to find out what mom is so afraid of. Mm-hmm. You know, her brother had told her that there'd be these secret passages. Uh, and you head in to find uh, through this little crawl space where uh, Edith's brother Milton had drawn some graffiti on the way through there. Yeah. Yeah. He was a, he was an artist. He was a painter, right? You're going to yep. see signs of where he was through, throughout all of this kind of implying yep. that the reason he ran off was because he had discovered all of this and wanted to get as yeah. far away from this family as possible. Even though he went and did uh, unfinished swan stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever happens in that game. <laughs> Not portal stuff. Something something whimsical. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he went and did some whimsy, some sad whimsy. <laughs> Uh, but we end up in Molly's bedroom. Uh, we're going, I believe, in chronological order as the relatives died. Um, hmm. uh, so this this is a death that happens in uh, 1947. And she's a little girl. Like, everything is cute and pink. Uh, and it's kind of left at almost exactly the way that it was when she died. Thankfully, there's no gerbil corpse or dead fish. Just kind of rotted and molding. I was expecting to be a, a gerbil. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Glad there's no gerbil. Yeah. Um, so like the Royal Tenenbaums, each of these characters has like a, a, a mono interest yeah. that they get into. And Molly was interested in wildlife, like biology and such. Um, we can kind of look around her room and see this uh, evidenced by her having multiple pets and such. Mm-hmm. Uh, she, there's a little memorial next to her desk with her diary, which we can read. And we get to go live as Molly, uh, her last diary entry. Yeah. Soon I'll be gone. It begins. And, yep. you know, she has been sent to sent to bed without dinner. Uh, that yep. never happened to me. Oh, me, me either. That's psychopath shit. Yeah. <laughs> like what, what parent would do that? I, I, I never thought anyone actually did that. I thought that was just a movie uh-huh. thing. Uh, that's, that's real. Like make them eat food. They don't like maybe like uh-huh. without dessert. No dessert. Yeah. Yeah, but you you have to realize your kid's growing and needs food. Uh huh. You know, like that. That's that's very abusive. Uh, yeah, I do not truck with that shit. Not at all. Uh, this family deserves everything that happened to them. <laughs> They're going to do this kind of shit. This, sins, this. sins of the great grandmother. Yeah, yeah, this is this is fucked up. Yeah. Uh, but she's um, starving, and she yeah. starts. You play as her, uh, like going around the room uh as the diary is narrating like oh i was so hungry and grabbing grabbing stuff to eat so like the little half carrot that is dried out in the uh in the gerbil cage right yeah uh and i love this because she eats three things here uh she eats that she eats an entire tube of toothpaste <laughs> yeah. uh and then she eats some berries that look like holly berries uh, yeah. from her bathroom window all of these are could plausibly kill you Yes, especially uh, if carrot, you're little. Yeah, yeah, the carrot the least, but mm-hmm. we don't know how long that's been there. You know, yeah. we don't know what's wrong with it. Toothpaste will clog up your guts. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're, there's a reason we don't eat toothpaste. Yeah. You know, and then holly is toxic. It probably wouldn't kill an adult. Right, eat some holly berries. You just get like really bad diarrhea. But uh, <laughs> she's little. Yeah, you know, she, and she, she, the she's guess and the toothpaste might cancel each other out, but I don't think it works that way. <laughs> No, no, like, no. And this is 1947 toothpaste, so God knows if it's uh, if it's radioactive. <laughs> radium, yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> radium and cocaine. Like basically <laughs> radium like, and cocaine together at last. <laughs> yeah. Ultra gleam, the tooth whitener. <laughs> yeah. So you've you, you've eaten all this stuff, and there's really nothing to do. Uh, she, thankfully, she doesn't eat the goldfish because it's still alive. But she remarks, "Yeah, that, she thinks you know, about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she considers just swallowing this goldfish whole." Uh, when she eventually goes to her window, she sees a sparrow, this little or this little uh, barn swallow, and then she goes out her window, and you think, "Okay, like this is a story about children being abused and then dying in in ridiculous ways." She's gonna fall out the window. Mm-hmm. but we're it's more whimsical than that she turns into a cat and chases the uh the barn swallow up the tree none of this stuff happened 
Right, right. Like, I mean, like, I don't need to tell you that she didn't turn into a cat. There, there aren't skin changing in, <laughs> in the Finch, Finch family. But I just mean, like, this is her whimsical little dying fantasy. Yes. That's happening here. It yeah. is, we're in the realm of the sad and metaphorical. Yes. So know. she, you know, and, and look, each step she gets a little bit more like bloodthirsty in this as her hunger and sickness gets worse. Right. So she's the cat, mm-hmm. you know, jumping up this tree and like very specifically is like, like, like all of these, at least the first couple, like, oh, it's a mama sparrow. I'm going to get her. I'm going to eat her uh, yep. as you're, as you're jumping up. But when you, when you catch, when, when, when you catch it, um, you, you turn from a cat into an owl and suddenly you're hunting mama rabbits. Right. So yep. you're listening for the skitter and then you uh, swoop down and kind of grab one. And then the owl like swallows them whole. Yep. Like owls do. Mm-hmm. Uh, then you get to the the top of this hill by this highway and you turn to a shark. <laughs> this is hilarious. Uh, and it turns into goat simulator for like a second, <laughs> like, like a, a flash game from 2005 on new grounds, yeah. <laughs> like shark launch. It turns into shark uh, and, dismount. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, uh, you flop down this hill uh, to get back in the ocean as a shark. Uh, it's very funny. And you go after seals, and then after you eat a cut enough seals, you turn into the sea monster, this tentacle yeah. sea monster. This really weird way of moving where you like shunt an arm out and then drag yourself mm-hmm. there. Um, you basically go through and kill a bunch of people on the ship and eat them until you slither, slither up this pipe and end up in Molly's room going up through the toilet. Yeah. Uh, and then you, your flight of fancy is done. You're in bed, lying in bed, finishing your diary. Yeah, um, yeah, you're scared the monster will get you because you're so delicious. Uh, this is her having intense stomach cramps. Yeah, uh, and rationalizing like she's dying. Mm-hmm. You know, basically. Yeah. Yeah, and like the the idea of the monster coming will be echoed a couple of times. You know, this is very much yeah. you know who, who knows what she knows of the curse, but this is yeah. you know her her understanding that it's drawing near. I'm going to say something that's uh, going to sound puerile and on brand, but I promise it's not. Uh, the fact that monster comes up through the toilet, I think is important. Yes. Like she's dying of stomach shit. Yes. She probably puked her guts out or shat her guts out before she died. Yeah. No, that makes you sense. You know, like, yeah. Yep. So. Yeah. yeah. But now the window's open so we can walk across this trellis uh, to reach Eddie's room. Or Edie's room. Door. Yeah. Edie's room. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, this is where Edie and uh, Sven lived. Uh, Sven yep. barely, barely factors into this. Uh, 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 we're going to be learning about like the story here is going to be like a little viewfinder, like talking about the establishment of the family in the house here, uh, and kind of the first death, uh, or the first learning about the first few deaths that are attributed to the curse. So this is like a museum, like all of the decorations are like little memorials and mementos. You walk in, you, you, you come in through the window and you see all these bird cages there and you think, oh, that's going to be, oh, she had birds. And like, yeah, there were birds, but inside each of them. Uh, is like a little painting of the of the animal that lived in the cage. So there's like a little lizard. There's a snake. There's birds. Instead of just put, getting a new animal and putting it in the cage, she kept the cage as a memorial and put that in there. Yep. Yeah. Uh, confusing. You know. Uh, uh, moving on with forgetting. Yes. Again. You know. Yeah. Um, there's a really short one we pick up here. With this little viewfinder we pick up uh, to learn about Odin Finch, who is the person who brought the curse over. Yeah. Uh, this family uh, ultimate patriarch brought the curse over from Norway, his first wife. And he was also very whimsical. Yes. Uh, he decided to bring his entire house over <laughs> on a boat. Uh, it sank, you know, cause, cause, cause of obvious. Uh, and then they began uh, him and his daughter, uh, Edie began constructing a new house. Yeah. Um, Odin died there in the, that sinking there. And he was the first to be memorialized. Yeah. And it's like, what kind of family, bu- you know, builds the cemetery before they build the house. Right. Yep. This kind, baby. <laughs> this guy, the Finch is. Yeah. Uh, you go into the uh, the ba- the bathroom here, uh, and mm-hmm. uh, just it's hideously pink. Uh, I I I saw this the kind of carpet that first off carpet in a bathroom, no, but the fact that it is this ridiculously long pink shag carpeting that is there, mm-hmm. it's like oh my god, there's such horrible stuff waiting in there. Yeah, uh, and it's the re- ultimate cursive. <laughs> <laughs> it is what ultimately remains to be to Finch yeah. is, is all the molecules in the shag. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, Ether marks, I, I have this wrong in the news. She said, oh, it was, it was the only yeah. mark that uh, that Grandma K uh, left in here, yeah. left on the house, right? His first wife. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we unlock a story storybook written uh, by Sven and Edie. Um, it's this little pop-up book. And mm-hmm. we pull tabs until we reveal this little latch next to the crawl space teaching us where to move on. 
Yeah. You know, uh, right. Before we go, there's some stuff I didn't make a note of, but we learn a little bit like Edie, the great grandmother here is kind of a fame hound. Like there are proudly framed um, uh, like uh, newspaper articles about like, oh, wildfire in Orcas Island, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> daughter of famously unfortunate family, you know, last <laughs> last to defy evacuation orders. Uh, there's mm. stuff like her going and telling the media about a mole person who lives beneath the house, you know, yeah. like trying to like propagate this myth as part of the family fame. Uh, you kind of see a little bit of uh, uh, indications of that up here. Yes. Yeah. And that's not the, uh, in the hands of a lesser or more sensationalist story, mm -hmm. that would be like the linchpin of this. Yes. Like it wouldn't be a more complex carbohydrate of being obsessed with death. It would mm -hmm. just be that, you know, and then like, she'd be killing everybody. Yeah. yeah. You know, to, on purpose to make a story mm -hmm. or something like that. I, yeah, but this, it, it just feels like this is part of a whole yes. of, of having an unhealthy relationship with death. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you uh, pass through uh, a, a crawl space that was turned by your grandpa into a dark room. He was real into uh, photography and you get into a real fucked up room. Um, <laughs> you get mm -hmm. into the room where Sam and Calvin lived. They were twin brothers um, and Calvin died in 1961 and Sam continued living in the room with his little brothers uh, kind of like cordoned off stuff. Uh, for another 12 years until he left yeah. to go to the army in 19. Yeah. Uh, or no, he left until, uh, or no, in 1968. Sorry. I got that wrong. Uh, so he lived, he, he lived with his dead brother from 1961 to 1968 when he said, Oh, Vietnam sounds pretty good. And left. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm going to go win that war. Yeah. Um, yeah. Pretty fucked up. Yeah. Uh, Calvin side has all kinds of little kid decorations. You can crawl up, uh, onto his little rocket ship cockpit. Mm -hmm. loft like play space that looks awesome yeah uh, there's a toy astronaut helmet there uh and inside you can find a fold up piece of paper this is a a, a poem uh, or a little essay here how i want to remember my brother by sam yeah um and we switch over to being calvin uh this yeah. is one of the simpler little vignettes but it's cute it's yeah. it's good and, and affecting <laughs> you are uh, uh, swinging on a tree swing that is uh, put precariously in your backyard, which is on a cliff facing the ocean. That was a mistake. Uh, this <laughs> family I... does love its dead kids, and they uh, they did set up a lot of attractive nuisances. Yeah, we, there's actually a DLC where you go to their field in the back that's just full of open refrigerators from the fifties. <laughs> um, they just every time they had a kid, they'd plant ten fridges uh, just to have a really good chance of trapping one. <laughs> um, Sven, Sven goes out back and sees the, the swing chain wrapped around the limb. It's like, well, I just picked a whole bouquet of oopsie daisies. <laughs> <laughs> he just marks a, marks a little notch on it on the side of his, <laughs> his jet. I did, that's what I mean when I say this gets comical, like an aggregate. Like, yeah. <laughs> the experience of playing this is not funny. It's sad. But, like, it's so funny just as a list of <laughs> bad things happening to kids because of horrible negligence. It just oops all goofuses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like, well, it's not like they write a book on how to be a parent, you know. <laughs> no, there are dozens of books. You just have too many copies of the same goddamn book. <laughs> you the Hardy Hardy books boys. multiplying. <laughs> you could have got rid of some of your Hardy Boys to get one book that tells you not to put a swing set on the edge of a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> think two steps ahead i can't do that i'm a finch <laughs> no, we finches never think once i don't i don't think want to get of any oh, sentences the finches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so you're so you're swinging uh and yeah. uh the letter the poem is talking about you know calvin was this little kid he was obsessed with space he always wanted to fly and he was stubborn you know, he, he always yeah. did whatever he made up his he mind to be fearless. To do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so he's keeps swinging and he's doing the thing that uh, kids have always wanted to do. Oh, yeah. Which is go all the way around the swing set. Yeah. Uh, that, that that was always a legend when I was a kid. Uh, there's like you, an episode of Pete and Pete about it. It's how that's you how you inside get inside out, out boy. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's This is a cool piece of kid lore. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Sam told. So there's a little bit of guilt here. Sam told Calvin it was impossible. And Sam yeah. thinks that's why he decided to do it. And you keep doing it and you eventually get there. You're going uh -huh. around. 
it's it's every kid's dream. However, the chain uh, catches on a branch and just fucking fucking you launches into the ocean. It just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, he he gets angry birds out to the cold and different sea. <laughs> he goes and hits a bunch of. Luckily, he fires his boosters and gets a little speed up to make sure at the end that he smashes the building that he's yeah. being sent into. He becomes a boom block. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what happened to Calvin? Yeah, he got boom blocks and then dashed he got up on Steven the rocks. Spielberg boom box. <laughs> <laughs> remember those uh, <laughs> pretty good weekend yeah, yeah that's what happened to our son's head sorry yeah sorry <laughs> well what did you do anything about it um we we glued up his room uh, <laughs> that's what you do right you know that spray insulation stuff <laughs> yeah. yeah we we yeah we sprayed it up we got some corpse wax and sprayed it <laughs> uh just incredible stuff and again i cannot stress to people this thing enough in the game it's sad <laughs> It's just so funny, like in aggregate to talk about. I, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> um, at least what, these early ones. Like, what, what do you expect us to do? <laughs> yeah, I don't. Uh, it's just it, one, one is a coincidence. You know, one's a tragedy. Imagine Hereditary if Tony Collette had like seven kids. Uh huh. And they had to go through six of them before the plot of Hereditary started. <laughs> <laughs> like five and just kept going well guess not this one and just kind of shunting from kid to kid um oh, i love it yeah uh <laughs> so uh this is this is fucked up you know he's he's, he's a twin right uh yeah and you know there, there, there's there, there's this connection and you have this little like 11 year old boy who suddenly is holding himself accountable for the death of his for, for 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 the death of his other half, you know, yeah, and you can I mean just horribly tragic when you go to you know look at the inside of the door when you come down. You know, this is when I noticed it, but you can see there's a there's a height chart on the inside of the door, right? You know, one mm. line for every year, and then uh, and then it just stops. Calvin stops, yep. and then Sam's keeps going until it keeps going up until he goes to the army. Yeah, yeah, it's very it's super tragic. Yeah. Uh, you open up this roll away uh, bookshelf there and crawl through and go into Barbara's room. Uh, we had seen some hints about this. We'd seen some ephemera. Barbara yeah. was a child star. Yeah. Um, she got her start uh, in a show called My Friend Bigfoot. <laughs> one of the, the, again, one of those little uh, nods to this being a scary game, crawling into her room and seeing this cardboard cutout. Uh huh. Can you imagine sleeping with that thing in your room every night? Oh, it'd be terrible. Good Lord. <laughs> My uh, uh, so my brother, uh, he used to decorate his room with old movie posters that he would get from uh, just different places that rented movies, like movie rental places would have them. You could just go in and ask, like, "Hey, can I have that when it when when you when you take it down?" Yeah. Uh, and one of the things that he had up on his wall was a uh, uh, it was a poster for the Danny DeVito movie Hoffa. Okay. Do you remember sure. the Danny DeVito movie Hoffa? Oh, and I, so, I would call Hoffa. Yeah, and the poster was just like the, just these, these these real you know, real tough looking guys like looming over, and he had it right night like right next to his bed, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> and great. just just <laughs> several times he woke up terrified of it, but he Working continued to keep Hoffas. it there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> just getting acclimated to the presence of a Hoffa. <laughs> yeah, something in a dark Hoffa. Yeah, um, but yeah, this uh, this and this is exactly the kind of like path you know that yeah. exist my friend bigfoot <laughs> that's um, really yeah. funny yeah very funny uh, and also kind of kind of what what would happen you know she yeah. was a star for two years and then people got sick of her right yep. and you know so she had to kind of exist as just a regular teenage girl who like everybody knew her name and you know kind of like living in the shadow of this former glory because you know child child stardom if you can't maintain it it will consume you right Yes. Yeah. I mean, she had, she had more than just my friend Bigfoot Yeah, because she did horror movies and became a scream queen. Yes. Like of this, she got a famous screen and her, scream. Her name is Barbara, uh, name checking Barbara Crampton and mm -hmm. Barbara from night of the living dead. Yeah. You know, um, she continued living here, you know, or she continued living till 1960. We go through this entryway to pass this old movie stuff until we get to things that look more like a 16 year old girl's room. Yeah. You know, uh, she was working a day job trying to get back into it. Yes. You know, um, you know, she, you can see her uniform from a local diner. Um, her desk has this moldy birthday cake in it. Uh, that's great. Mm -hmm. Um, there's an ashtray next to it. Um, the, uh, the eighth and 11th candles are taken out and her memorial is this little book, uh, this EC comics comic book. 
mm-hmm. that they did uh, as a story about her, this, this fading uh, Scream Queen, you yeah. know, a child star, uh, this ep- issue of Dreadful Stories. Yeah. Uh, uh, the which surprise is, ending it, of Barbara Finch. <laughs> the surprise ending of Barbara Finch, uh, narrated uh, by their stand up for the Crypt Keeper is Mr. Jack. Uh, yeah. He's like a like a like a guy with a rotten rotting uh, jack o' lantern for a head, uh, and I, they they've got the crypt yeah. keeper voice very, very very good. If it wasn't for the voice actors strike, uh, they would have gotten um, uh, oh my gosh, who are they? John Carpenter uh, to narrate. Oh wow, this. yeah, nice, yeah. Oh, they're gonna get the real crypt keeper, but I was like, I, that guy's got to be dead, right? Oh, it, oh, he's dead as fuck. Yeah, yeah. he's <laughs> he's uh, yeah, he's never been more dead. Um, <laughs> died as he lived. I <laughs> uh, so this you know. This is starts out as a motion comic, and the graphic style changes to be kind of cell shaded. Looks like the Wolf Among Us, yeah, something like that. Um, you know, her career ended, but she was invited to this local monster movie convention to perform her scream. When she went there, she was unable to do it. Her voice yeah. had changed. Yeah, or yeah. she was she was practicing for it, and she was dreading it. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She and she did not get a good scream. Right. Uh, her dad had an accident with a table saw. Um, I, I, I think this is when he died, and, sh- and it's just not remarked upon. Yeah, uh, just, <laughs> the, he didn't get a short story. <laughs> like again, he he after he uh, had the accident on the table, so he ran out into one of those fridges. Uh-huh. And his short stories in the DLC when you read the instructions to the fridge. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Absolutely, do not plant a field of these. <laughs> yeah, do not do not plant a field of these. Do not go into these after getting cut. It is not medical attention. And then it fades back out. It's like, and then she says something sad about Sven. Yeah. Uh, so she couldn't go to the convention uh, because uh, she had to stay home and take care of her little brother, Walter, uh, the one with the sea themed room that we uh, uh, kind of walked through. Uh, and so she stays at home and she's trying to get back into it. She's got her boyfriend there. just practicing the, practicing her scream. Right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he's trying to, you know, oh, you, you, you gotta make it real. Right. I'm not believing it. Uh, and they, this is where some fantastical stuff starts coming in. There are like radio broadcasts that talk about all these marauders on the islands, you know, yeah. like, Oh, there's a radio broadcast. There are hoodlums and, and co- Halloween costumes going around, roughing people up. Yeah, stay in your house. Lock the door. Yeah. Uh, and they hear something coming from the basement. So the boyfriend goes down to inspect. Uh, you know, Barbara tells him how to get into the basement, which is a secret. It's one of the only things that's kind of a puzzle in this, which is turning mm-hmm. this music box uh, past when it stops playing. So eventually yes. I, the, it'll come out, the handle will come out as a key. He doesn't come back. So Barbara goes after her and the frame stops. You're looking at a motion comic and then the frame stops and you're, you just have to wait a minute, minute and then you press, you know, W. You start wazding around and you can move around within the frame. Yeah. You're now controlling a character within the frame of the motion comic. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's real cool. <laughs> yeah. And it's playing the actual Halloween theme song. The yeah. Yeah. One of, one of the greatest pieces of horror music. Oh, it's wonderful. like ever like super simple, but just super good. Yeah. Um, you get to the basement and you can find uh, your boyfriend's crutch. Uh, there are one of his crutches of his two. And this mm-hmm. is suspicious. Uh, this allows you to swing that around. And they just put a bunch of fun physics objects around uh-huh. so you can get used to slamming things. Yeah. You don't have to. There's no action really in this part. Yeah. But it, it, they're giving you a fun little interactive thing. Yeah. Uh, so you work around to this uh, fridge at the end of a back hallway. We're going to be seeing this fridge. But he's hiding in there. Uh, yeah. the, 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 the boyfriend, he jumps out with this you know creepy mask on. Uh, to get a real scare out of her, to you know, to surprise her, and she just you just wails on him with the crutch, obviously. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and you know, he he basically he he reveals himself, uh, yeah. and she's like, "That that fucking sucks." She <laughs> kicks him out. Yeah. Uh, I don't care how many murders are out there. That fucking sucked. <laughs> uh, the radio then talks about the hook-handed killer being on the loose. Classic. Uh, it's a busy night. <laughs> um, <laughs> conceptually a lot going on this night yeah it's a it's like that that shadow run where another pair of shadow runners are already there <laughs> like you know it's like that except for the hoodlums and the hook hand killer um <laughs> the hook hand killer is in the house uh so you have to run you run into walter's room you close the door sneak in through the crawl space this is all stuff we've done in the in modern times yeah yeah you know it's kind of neat you go out into molly's room uh and you end up attacking him from behind yeah. You crawl out through her door. This is before it was sealed up mm-hmm. uh, and take him out uh, as he's trying to get into the door. Yeah. And he falls over the balcony, uh, you know, yeah. crash through the railing and onto the coffee table. And when you go down to check his body, you know, just to confirm the kill, he's gone. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the doorbell rings. Uh, so you go down to open the door and you hear whispering behind you in the house. You turn around and it's all the monsters. Yeah. Uh, all the people in the monster masks. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, it looks like, you know, initially. Yeah. And then she realizes, oh no, they're real monsters. Uh, yes. realize what they were here to do. And you know, the line from the comic is little Barbara had a taste for stardom. Unfortunately, so did her fans. <laughs> yes. Uh, they ate her. Yes. Uh, and all they ever found of Barbara was her, her ear, which yeah. was in the music box. Uh, the police pinned the crime on her boyfriend who disappeared the very same night. Yeah. Um, little Walter hid under his bed the whole time, traumatized. Uh, and they say, but that was another story. Yeah. Um, we don't know how much of any of that is real. Right. Uh, it, this is an EC comic, you uh-huh. know, which are, are not very they're, they're They're, they're, they're not um, beholden to the same regulations as most other uh, news publications. Comics. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it's like I, <laughs> these pictures of Spider-Man are photo accurate. This EC <laughs> comic stuff, I don't know if it happened. Yeah. <laughs> what are your sources? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, I mean, if it, you know. It, it uh that definitely what is real is that that year was in that uh w- was was in that music box. You know? I, I love that so much. Like there, you know, whatever happened to her, we don't know what it is. Uh huh. But she did lose her ear. Yep. You know, it's it's that real. So it's probably uh-huh. not cannibal convention. Yeah. You know that, that came after her, but something happened where she lost her ear. Yeah, it might be the boyfriend. You know, it might yep. be it might be an intruder, something like that. Like it would only. I mean. It would almost have to be be the boyfriend because he was the only one that she told the secret to getting into that music box. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Likely the boyfriend. Likely the boyfriend. Uh, yeah. Um, and Edith uh, says, uh, she remembers Edie saying that Barbara only wanted to be remembered. Maybe this yeah. comic book is what she wanted. Yeah. You know, maybe this does it. She's famous yeah. in EC Comics. Which is just real. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. Uh, a, a weird thing to make the story of your daughter this uh, kind of sensationalist and disrespectful depiction of the way that she died. If they made yeah. an EC comic of me, I would want it to be part of my shrine. I suppose, yeah. But it wouldn't be all my only bit of my shrine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I did other stuff other than die. <laughs> you know, but again, that's that's Edie, right? Yep. Um, so the, the music box uh, next to the locked base that we can get in there now. As a little mechanical Barbara dancing in front of a silhouette of Bigfoot. If we crank it until the handle comes out, it's a key. So we can go down to the basement. Yeah. And there's a fridge with a false back. Uh, this is a mummer's fridge, unlike the ones in back of the house. Uh, this leads into this underground shelter. And we learn what happened to Walter. It is a story for another time right now. Yeah. Uh, so after Barbara died, uh, Walter tried to get as far away from her as possible, which apparently it, his idea of the possible was just lower in the house. Yeah. Uh, two floors down. Well, he was a kid at the yeah, time. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, either says, OK, well, if there's a pattern in all these stories, I think it's that none of us got very far, uh, which is yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. Even, even if they went away, they ended up coming back. Uh, and like you go through and there's just tons of canned food and stuff and you get into his little kitchenette, his little galley kitchen, this sad place where he lived his life. Um, and, uh, we find his last note kind of handwritten on a piece of uh, loose leaf paper, uh, folded up on this kit, you know, on the, on the counter here. Uh, and we live out, uh, a couple of, well, basically he's been living the same day over and over again. Uh, yeah. and it is, it is literally just a couple of, uh, scenes where we're sitting at that counter, um, uh, opening up, uh, cans of peaches and then, uh, throwing them back. Yeah. Slurping them. <laughs> yeah. He, he's uh, 10 Cloverfield leaning it. Yes. Is what kids uh, call it these days. It's a, <laughs> it's a, <laughs> it's sweeping the nation. Yeah. It's the new TikTok trend. And yeah. Cloverfield leaning and kid, your kids are doing it. <laughs> yeah. And each of these scenes, you know, like you go through the, the, the room shakes, he thinks it's the monster. You open the can of peaches and he drinks it. And it's hilarious because he's got a calendar. Obviously Edie's bringing him the food and bringing him the calendar so he can keep track of stuff. But it's like 1968. You're listening to that music. 1976. You're listening to that music. And then one day in 2005, the shaking stops. Yeah. And this is one of those things where the culpability is on the the parents. Yes. Where yeah. like if oh, oh my very young son just wants to go live in the basement like a mm-hmm. prepper, like I'll allow it. You know, you, you, <laughs> by no means do you have to just be like that's okay. Yeah. You know. Uh so uh the shaking is gone. You know the shaking which he's considering to be the curse or the monster. Yeah. You know, he refers to. Uh and he's like, you know, it's been gone for a little while. I'm going to leave. I want mm-hmm. to actually live. Uh, it's very, it's very melancholy. Yeah. Uh, you open a hatch and go down to his uh, garbage pit. 
<laughs> you know? And he's like, I'm going to go out. I know whatever killed Barbara and Molly and Calvin is out there, but I'm going to go out there anyway. Yeah. Uh, and you, you pick up a sledgehammer, you break through the cinder block wall and you walk out and you're on, on a train tunnel. Yeah. Um, you're like, I'm going to live outside even for one day. Like, even if I die in a week, even if I die in a day, this is worth it. Yeah. You walk down the tracks and it feels really good. You know, you have the sun on your face. You look up and a train rushes in to hit you. Yep. Kill uh, him. Yes. Uh, this train track, if it were real, would go right into the house. Yes. Uh, here. Uh, so this is also probably not how this guy died. Yeah. Uh, here. Weirdly, when you read about this game on TV tropes and stuff, mm -hmm. people are like, we really don't know how anyone died except for Walter. He definitely died from a train. No, the tracks. Like, <laughs> yeah, the tracks go into his into their basement, not how trains don't do. <laughs> you know, like, this isn't what happened. Yeah. Uh, you know, he, he might have gotten hit by a train, but uh -huh. not that train and not then. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It, 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 it is unclear. Uh, what yes. what is happening there? But uh, you know, if you did get hit by the tracks, like just the fact that a train, like probably a railway strike, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> disrupted the schedule <laughs> enough. Like, oh yeah, I stopped showing up for a week, so my, you know, just I'm, I, I get my resolve, and then boom, it comes back. Commerce is yep. moving again. Yeah, then, it, yeah. Well, we're just gonna go through their basement. We found a shortcut. Yeah, through the Finch's basement. Yeah. Um, but, uh, Edith says, you know, Walter died when she was six. Her mom never told her that her, uh, that her great uncle was living down there. Yeah. Uh, like just, he just, he just died one day. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, crazy. Yeah. Uh, so you open this, uh, this little window that's in the wall. Yeah. Uh, this little shadow box with a painting and light. This is his fake little window, similar to the robots in, uh, that good vault. Yes. From Far Harbor. Vault. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, there, there's a little window planter with fake flowers on it. When you go through that cave and out onto the tracks, uh, leaving here, Edith talks about how she didn't want to make the same mistake that her mom did burying something that's alive. Yes. You know? Yeah. Uh, again, theme theme. Um, and this is where in her narration in the journal, she starts kind of realizing having seen all of these things, you know, maybe the stories are the problem. Uh, maybe we believe so much in a family curse that we made it real, right? There's this obsession with death. This is the way that we conceptualize, um, you know, uh, people, you know, people are their last moments. People are whatever drew them to their conclusion, you know, like maybe that brings some target fixation into the, uh, into the equation. Yeah. Uh, you walk out in the, this back zone, uh, on this path to the cemetery. There's a build before the house, as they mentioned, uh, Edith says that she's always more uncomfortable with the pet cemetery than the, uh, the main one, probably because uh -huh. of that Ramon song. Um, and we, we pass uh, the little grave of three gerbils, you know, she says <laughs> three of these gerbils are mine, two are my fault. Mm -hmm. Uh, we go past that memorial to Odin that we read about earlier, mm -hmm. you know, and find a, a telescope that is pointed at the still exposed wreck of the original home. Yes. Uh, out in the water. Like that really happened. He did put a house on the back of a boat mm -hmm. yeah. and go out there. Yeah. And, yeah, and then now they've got a little buoy on it. There's a beacon so that ships don't run into it. Yeah, uh, again, t terrible thing to have. <laughs> just you're yeah. just asking for trouble. Yeah. Very silly. Yeah, uh, you double back. You end up going a different way than you came mm -hmm. uh, here. It's a little bit confusing. Like I looked back and I was like, oh, that is. I thought maybe uh, the scenery is changing behind me. Yeah, yeah. At this point, but it really is just kind of a trick of perspective. Yes. Um. Yeah. You uh you head back there past this uh, treehouse. Yeah, you go through you go through the uh, the uh, graveyard for uh, Edith Mother's Dawn, uh, Dawn's generation, right? Yes, uh, and, and you go up into this treehouse. Uh, the tree connects to this roof roof drop. You walk across a limb. Um, I did not look down in this because I don't make the assumption that you can look down. Like uh -huh. It's rare in games that you can do it. So this is where I found out the character was pregnant. Yes, this uh, is the reveal. She, yeah, she says yeah. Uh, if Mom had told me that there'd be this much climbing, it wouldn't have come when I was twenty two weeks pregnant. And seems with, irresponsible, <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe, know. maybe get a ladder. There's a lot of clutter. Maybe get a ladder, Edith. Yeah. But you know, like this, this also is information, right? Yeah. You know, uh, like I, uh, you know, I'm going out and you're balancing along this limb. It's very precarious. And it's like, did you not just see everybody die? These very, very preventable deaths. This is why <laughs> the baby was born with a broken arm. Uh, <laughs> with a cast. <laughs> <laughs> he, um, so, so you, uh, reach the roof and you climb up into grandpa Sam's room, which is full of all of his military memorabilia, uh, taxidermy, hunting stuff and photography stuff. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, and there is no sign of his wife. Uh, his wife, Kay, uh, the one who designed that bathroom, the horrible mm-hmm. bathroom. Uh, uh, just the, the, the only sign that she ever existed was uh, over on, is over on a desk. There's an empty plane ticket uh, envelope. And also there is a small box of like things that uh, were left behind that he was, you know, eventually going to mail to her. Yeah. Uh, the memorial that you can find here has an envelope full of pictures. Uh, and this starts this vignette. You flip through them and all of a sudden you are taking pictures. So this whole bit is done through a viewfinder. I love this. Of a camera. Yeah, this is, this is great. Even though, again, uh, very the in aggregate, the timing of it's very funny what happens. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so you're taking pictures this whole time. It's a camping trip uh, that Dawn went on with Sam. Yes. Uh, you're playing as Dawn. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you're taking pictures of scenery while, you know, her dad talks about, you know, oh, the last this time that I Edith's mother as well, by the way. Yes. So Grandpa Sam, Edith's mother. Like, getting the family tree after you do these, it sh- actually shows you a family tree mm-hmm. uh, and marks them off your list. Yes. And I found that very useful for conceptualizing this because this is a huge family. Especially time as well. Yes. Like, it gives the born and died uh, kind of dates as well. Yep. Yeah, it's, it is it is useful. I also love how, again, the people who married into the family, they're not part of the branch. They're just like little leaves. Yep. <laughs> little, little leaves who, rest assured, they tragically died. Yeah. <laughs> so um yeah you're it just you're talking about like oh the last time that we came you know that that uh sam came here was 20 years ago uh with his brother calvin um and what he's trying to do he wants to impart onto dawn um uh, survival skills right uh and his concept of survival is you know you need to be self-reliant he wants to uh teach her to kill uh we're gonna you yeah. notice that this is hunting you're gonna kill a buck you know that, that's what we're out here to do it's like killing a beautiful man <laughs> uh, yeah, she, she just want to uh you know but she's she's got to do it yeah you know yeah. um you you turn you get the the shot of her shooting uh the buck and then you're sam setting up the camera and timer uh so you can run up there and get a picture with dawn who is sobbing uh because mm-hmm. she just killed a deer yeah um, i think forcing a kid to hunt is awful yeah if they don't want to, you know, like just, yeah. uh, just like, oh yes, you know, you're, 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 you are soft if you do not want to unnecessarily take something's life, you know, if that's yeah. not, if that, if that's not how you're living, if that's not how you're, how you're subsiding and that's just recreational, I think that there are other ways to learn whatever lesson you're trying to impart. <laughs> oh, yeah, what, and, and there are counter lessons Yes, that you're, that you're like not learning by mm-hmm. doing this like hunting is complicated it's not for me i'm not condemning the entire thing right, right like i'm not right. saying like it has no place and if you teach a kid that that's fine like you teach mm-hmm. kids your hobby and your way of life but if the kid's like i don't want to hurt animals mm-hmm. that is also a cogent and good philosophy yeah to be yeah. encouraged like let's that doesn't need that. to be <laughs> yeah that like let's wean that like hey you know this is how our family like gets food and everything this can be necessary but let me teach you how to forage mm-hmm you know, let, let me teach you how to do other survival stuff that doesn't involve this. Like, yeah, you can have this value and it's a good value. Yeah. Like taking a, a kid, having a reasonable moral and mm-hmm. being like, that's stupid. <laughs> I think is one of the worst things you can do to a kid. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but so. he he's, you know, that this this is him, you know, imparting on her like, OK, d- d- our entire family is fucked up and destined to die. Well, well I mean, everybody's destined to die. But yeah. like he, he very much is trying to cope with the loss of all these people around him by focusing on survival. We're going to see that when we get into the next room. Yes, uh, and go, and go through the different uh, the different deaths there. He, but he, he, yeah, he, he is trying to avert this through pra- practical skills. Um, but, uh, it, it, it backfires on him because, you know, you run out and, uh, when you get to her to like stand, stand next to her on this high bluff where she shot, shot this deer, you know, staring majestically at the morning sun. Uh, (laughs) It was on loan from like truck stop art. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know he's there posing next to her and you know she says uh, oh he's twitching and sam says oh that's normal and then the camera goes off at the exact minute that the uh, deer wakes up and bucks and knocks him off of this high cliff again so funny that they just have a picture of him going Whoa! <laughs> like off the thing like it's very sad and i can't again cannot stress this enough when you're playing it comes off as sad yeah in retrospect thinking of them having this memorial that includes a photo of the exact moment of impact 
and her going, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> was it, it's just what? so unlikely. <laughs> Was it was it an episode of The Simpsons? Was it a Treehouse of Horror thing where like they they had an open casket funeral, but the person still looked terrified, like they yeah. were? <laughs> <laughs> it's just the exact moment of their death, the same expression. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's very funny. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, you know, very very sad, very funny. Yeah. Well, you think about uh, and, Dawn's situation, right? She has just done this thing that she didn't want to do. She was horrified, and then in, a, in an she instant, she has to get lit- back. Yeah, 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 she's got to get back. What do you like, do? Like, you're on the woods. Like, holy like, shit. Yeah. Awful. Awful. Yeah. yeah absolutely awful. Um, DV, DFCS or DCFS, <laughs> please. Um, the, uh, so, and, and Ian says of all these stories, that's the one I wish my mother had told me the most. Yeah. It was, it's the death of her grandpa. And the fact that she yeah. had the, uh, had, had to be had to right there. Her. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Sad. Very. And funny. Uh, <laughs> Very so, I mean, funny. It's, it's just for this, I mean that picture. I don't know. Um it's real crypt keeper shit. go through the attic uh, to this nursery where uh, Gregory, Don, and Gus slept as little kids. Yeah. Um, and it's like a barracks. Mm-hmm. Um, this is how he raised his kids because he was so scared of this curse. Um, you know, there's an emergency evacuation map, uh, house rules, workout equipment. Um, you know, it's real bleak. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the point of interest here is baby Gregory's uh, crib and his memorial. Yeah. Uh, born in 1976, died 1977. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. Big uh-oh. Uh, and the memorial that they set up is the divorce papers for Sam and Kay. Yeah. Um, it's the, the scan, uh, the divorce papers, and a scan of a letter from Sam to Kay. Yeah. Uh, and this is real sad, uh, this, this whole bit that happens here. Yeah. Um, she's saying, you know, you remember the times Gregory would laugh when he thought he was alone. Yeah. You know, and we are now a baby. Mm-hmm. We're a baby. Gaga. We're so we're <laughs> we're so we're sitting. You, you got to do the goo goo gaga. Yeah, you got to do the goo goo gaga. Do the gaga. <laughs> you're 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 sitting in this tub, right? You know, it's bath time. A uh, fun time for any little kid. Uh, playing with toys, right? And what you're doing is you're controlling his little wind up frog. Uh, as it swims around and hops in and out of the water, like the rubber duckies are doing a uh, like a Nutcracker suite kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Buzzby Berkeley kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kay comes in to get you out of the tub, but gets a call from Sam and they're arguing. So like whatever breakup thing they had has already happened. They're already yeah, estranged. Yeah. They were already on the rocks. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, they argue and you knock a bottle of bubble bath into the water. Yahtzee. If you're a mm-hmm. baby, this is the best thing that could ever happen to you. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, she comes back and she drains the tub, uh, but she gets another call. Yeah. So you're there in the tub as it's training, draining, you control the little frog and little bits sparkle mm-hmm. showing your interest. Yeah, uh, you control the frog and turn the water back on. Yeah, uh, that's no good. Nope. Uh, and then it fills up, and when it goes over the baby's head, you are first person as a little baby frog man. Uh, uh, you know, human frog or <laughs> human hands, froggy skin, and you're yeah. swimming wizard in the hat. ocean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, I don't know if the uh the the strong wizard episode has come out yet. We're making it happen, folks. Yeah, 2023, <laughs> the year of the buff wizard. Yeah, please, <laughs> the buff please wizard, possibly a frog. This. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, but you're swimming toward the uh the, the drain plug. You know, you kind of yeah. see it in the floor of the ocean, and the chain is extending upward. Yep. Uh, you, uh, knock it out, you know, to try to, you know, you knock it loose, but you can't swim up. You're being pulled down. Yeah. You swim towards the drain. Uh, and this, this baby drowned. Yes. You know, uh, Sam says in the letter, uh, he knows that Gregory's death wasn't Kay's fault. He blames himself for calling. It's really nobody's fault. Yeah. What, what a horrible thing. How fucking tragic. Like again, yeah. uh, devotion does that better, but like this, there's, this one's not funny to me. No, not uh, at all. You know, yeah, this is just fucking awful to think about because you just I cannot imagine feeling worse. No, no. I I don't I don't know people find their way back out of this, yeah. but I do, I don't know how. Um Yeah, uh, yeah not yeah, to be is, not to be bleak, but yeah. Yeah, that's fucking rough. Yeah. 
Very, very sad. Um, the last bed in this line is Gus's. Uh, he died in 1982 as a, uh, a 13 year old little punk. Um, and there's this little memorial, uh, poem written by Dawn for Gus, her yeah. sister for her brother. Um, it's a scroll wrapped around a kite string, uh, here. Yeah. And this yeah. is, uh, you being Gus on the day that Sam decided to remarry. Yeah. And, um, and Gus is this serious. Is, yeah. We don't need a stepmom. Yeah. Very, very well observed. Uh, the, the degree to which a kid like I can kind of baselessly hate a step parent. Mm -hmm. Like I remember going through that with each of my mom's boyfriends, like just being like, fuck you. (laughs) And they, (laughs) you know, they were, they were a lot of bad dudes. Yes, Like there are a lot of people, those people were actually deserved Mm -hmm. that, but some of them were probably okay in the grand scheme of things, but they just like by default, Mm -hmm. just like, this is wrong. You know, this ain't right. I don't like this. Yes. You know, yeah. It's a very uh, natural kid reaction, I think. Agreed. Uh, but she's, but, but Gus is, you know, flying his kite on this very windy day, you know, as the ceremony is happening, uh, which is, yes. I, I cannot imagine letting that just like, oh, we're just going to, this is how we're going to remember it with this kite flying above us. Yeah. <laughs> from our sullen <laughs> sun. Yeah. 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 Uh, they do try to stop him. He just won't do it. Yeah, and the, yeah. these parents do let their kids do whatever they want. You want to go live in a fallout shelter in the basement for the, your whole life? Great. Let's I'll, do it. I'll bring you peaches. Can I have anything yeah. besides peaches? No, just peaches. Yeah. You, you live on the peach diet. Millions of peaches. Um, peaches, yeah, for peaches, for peaches for Peaches for you. Um, <laughs> so you're flying this kite, kind of sweeping around the words of Dawn's poem, you yeah. know, about how you're upset about this. You're flying the kite during the ceremony. Sam calls you over for photos and you flip them off. You know, you, you do not do this. Yeah. The rest of the family goes up uh, into this reception tent to party. Um, Sam put this up himself and the wind picks up. It's a storm. Uh, and now your kite that you move around will sweep stuff off the beach, representing yeah. the wind. Mm-hmm. You know, and, you know, the wind picked up and Sam, uh, you know, kind of more focused on the party than the fact that his kid is out flying a kite in the middle of the storm, uh, you know, just tells the DJ, hey, play the music louder, you know, to drown out the sound of the wind, you know, never let the party die. Yes, Uh, to drown out the sound of my son. (laughs) <laughs> and then your kite like the last thing that there is to do is to this kite representing the winds of destruction here to sweep to sweep down toward the tent and then pick it up uh and then this th- this this tent like flies direct directly at you very quickly uh like right into the camera and then you watch gus get swept out to the sea by this tent that is blown uh, and this whole thing looks like a jellyfish. So the wind picked up and the, you know, picked up the tent and then this came and, you know, got Gus and then took him out to sea. Yep. A lot of drownings going on. Yeah. Uh, you climb up the rock, climbing these handholds uh, to reach the, the loft above the nursery. This is in, in real life. Not yes. after Gus died. Uh, this is where Dawn moved after her brothers died there. Uh, and this shows how Dawn kind of turned to religion. After Sam yes. died, there's, there's religion stuff around here. Mm-hmm. Uh, she went to Calcutta to build houses for a summer. And that's where she met uh, Edith's father, Sanjay. Mm-hmm. Uh, he died in an earthquake, which we find out, even though we don't get to see it. He's a little Marian. Yes. But he dies in an earthquake, according to the wiki. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, after that, she moved uh, to India to teach English for a while. Uh, Lewis was born a year later. Uh, but then she moved back to Washington into the house after Sanjay died in an earthquake. Yes. Yeah. Um, so now we climb out to the roof and we're at the last generation here, uh, where again, because you're not reusing any rooms, you have to build up, right? Yep. Little, little Kowloon walled whimsical house. <laughs> <laughs> Cow whimsical. <laughs> Cow yeah. whimsical city. Yeah. And you're, 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 you're climbing up the, to these new additions. Like the first thing that you pass through is this, uh, uh, is this little classroom where Don was teaching the kids and it's like, okay, the scientific method, but also like the family tree and the family lore kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, and she says, you know, things were normal for a while and she really loved it, but that didn't last. Yeah. Uh, things started going wrong when Edie gave Milton a castle for his 10th birthday and uh, you open the door to Milton's uh, lighthouse bedroom and painting studio, hoist yourself up into his little uh, geodesic dome that he lives in. Mm-hmm. Uh, his memorial document is a flip book he made. He's the artist. Yeah. Uh, called the Magic Paintbrush. And it shows a little 11-year-old boy, Milton, painting himself a doorway and walking through it. Uh, this is yeah. because Milton in real life disappeared to go to unfinished swan stuff. 
Yes. You know, and Dawn kept insisting, oh, he's still alive. You know, we never found the body, you know, just but she's the, the entire house has all these uh, missing posters uh, put up for him. Right. Yes. You know, she went searching for him, but he couldn't find him. And that's when she started sealing the doors. You yes. know, and Edith says, whatever he found in the house, mom didn't want it getting out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you go outside, you climb to the tallest point of the house, which is this ramshackle addition that is a boat. Yeah. Uh, straight up with these shacks on top of it. Uh, pretty cool. Mm -hmm. You know, if you were a teen stoner, like this is the, the coolest place you could possibly live. Oh, yeah. Um, Don blamed Edie for Milty disappearing, but Lewis, uh, who we're going to meet in a moment, blamed himself. Uh, yeah. He fell into this very deep depression and spent his time in his room. Um, yeah. He was older than Milton, a sophomore in high school when his brother died. Yeah. And just he fell into this depression and until, you know, he graduated. Don made Lewis go get this job at the local fish cannery. Uh, and we climb into his bedroom, which is the, you know, cockpit and deck of this uh, of this boat. Uh, we see that he kind of became a pothead. He, you know, has just a just a pose with his legalized marijuana, which is yes. very poorly observed. Very quaint, especially yeah. for Washington. Yeah. yeah. yeah this, is, this is that's the like one of the weird little sub themes now of of doing WAF and, and doing the network stuff because it's uh -huh. keeps coming up in uh breaking, breaking bad. As bad. Well. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's like, just, okay. You know, Skyler's like, I would divorce you in two seconds if I found out you were dealing pot. Like, <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. okay. uh, that's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. no, just the, the, the changing attitude toward weed is one of the weird things to observe in media, uh, especially yeah. over the course of the decade plus we've been doing this. Um, but, uh, you know, he had his little, 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 little stoner layer up here. Like uh, Edith even says, like, oh, yeah, it smells exactly like I remember it. You know, yeah. uh, it's uh, st still around. Um, and we find a, uh, a box containing the contents of Lewis's locker, uh, that was sent from, sent home from the cannery, uh, after his death. And the epistolary here, uh, the document is this letter from the Washington Institute of Psychiatry, where his therapist is explaining what she thinks happens. This is the A plus thing. Like this is yeah. th this, this more than justifies this entire game as an experience. I was fucking devastated the first time that I played it and I cried even this time. So it's really good. Yeah, it, it's the best one. The Barbara one is also really good. Mm -hmm. I, I think this in in if it didn't have this one, that one would be the best. Yeah, you know, uh, this is really really good. So, yeah. Um. So he was sent into counseling to get clean uh, from the stop, you know, doing pot. But when he started, when he did that, he started noticing the monotony of his life. Yeah. Uh, and we play as Lewis. We're in a cannery. Uh, you grab a fish, you move it over to a little fish guillotine and chop mm -hmm. their heads off. Yeah. Uh, and knife, over and knife over goes and over. in, guts come out. Knife goes in, it, guts it, come out. 100%. That is exactly what Osaka fish concern is all about. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, you know, that's the idea. And this is a real ass thing people do. Uh -huh. This is a job. There may be yeah. people listening to this right now who mm -hmm. do stuff like this. Yeah. Uh, it's wild. Like it, it is, uh, I've worked really monotonous jobs before. Uh, it is a indignity. Yes. Uh, you uh, know, it sucks that we, that people have to, to do this stuff. Yes. Yeah. Um, but you're doing this. So, you know, you're controlling his hand with, uh, either the right stick or your mouse, uh, as you're, uh, as you're playing it. Um, and then this little black cloud appears at the left pan portion of the screen, uh, kind of the place where the, the, the fish come down, you know, from the little hopper for you to get to commence to chopping. Um, and inside this little black cloud, we kind of see this top down maze game. You know, we see like this robed wizard figure, uh, that we are controlling with WASD or the left stick. So you are chopping the fish as they come in, but your focus and all of your attention is on this thing that is happening in this little window on the left hand side of the screen that is getting bigger as you pass different parts of the story. Right. Yeah. And for all the world, you think you're going to chop off your hand. Yes. Uh, like that, no, you're I, not getting off that easy. <laughs> yeah. I, I really just thought you were going to chop off your hand, which would be pretty bad. Yes. You know, in a fish zone. Uh huh. You know, there's get a lot of fish in there. Yeah. That's no good. yeah. Uh, so we learned that, you know, Lewis is retreating into his imagination. He's replacing this dulling effect of drugs really quick for the record. I've said this before. If somebody's working a menial job, I want them to be high. Yes. Uh, if anyone ever makes me a pizza, mm -hmm. if they're not high, it is an injustice. Yes. Uh, they should be able to do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, because of this, you know, he envisions this maze, you're walking past the words of the psychiatrist and they're turning into little bats and toads. Yeah. Uh, and then as his imagination gets better, the game gets better. It's mm -hmm. kind of like a good version of evil land. <laughs> um, the, the game turns isometric and things get more detailed. 
Yeah. Um, the psychiatrist is worried that Lewis keeps daydreaming at the factory, but his boss says Lewis is like a whole new man. He's tireless and focused. He's a model employee. <laughs> Which is the bleak as hell. Like I'm really yeah. worried about his well being. He seems he seems detached, but because he is a good cog in the machine, like, yep. hey, let's let's just encourage this. <laughs> yeah, it's working out for the fish cannery. Yeah. You know, whatever's good for the cannery. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, just really, like you're, you're focusing on two things at once here. You're moving the fish and you're with your right hand and you're moving the uh, little thing around with your left hand as he is retreating further into Marwen. Right. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's exactly it. Yeah. He welcomes to Marwen himself. Yeah. Um, the, uh, so the cloud gets bigger. The fantasy gets more lush. Yeah. You know, uh, he recedes inwards. And he makes more details for his yeah. fantasy where he becomes a leader of, of these various areas like Lewiston. And then he starts founding new cities new lewiston st louis minneapolis <laughs> Min- minneapolis, minneapolis. And, yeah. and it's the it's the it's the therapist who is reading this and as you're so now you're controlling a boat as he's going on this conquest up this river channel kind of thing when she gets to minneapolis i fucking lose it it's, it's so funny. funny in her cadence yeah, yeah it's really good minneapolis <laughs> uh you know uh one day you even forget to go home from the cannery mm-hmm. uh dawn like pleaded with you know, goes there and pleads with him, but he doesn't care. Yeah. Uh, he is too in his fantasy world. Yeah. And this channel starts branching out as he imagines choosing between either a handsome princess or a beautiful prince, you mm-hmm. know, giving you a very subtle uh, sexuality slider yeah. for the, this character uh, and starts following them on their journey as he reaches his golden palace. It's getting, and it's crowding the screen. Yes. Like at some point it's the full backdrop and there are just fish that come through. And one uh-huh. of my favorite things is how the fish will make their way into the fantasy land. Mm-hmm. like a door will be barred and you'll chop the fish and it'll make the fish that's barring the door open up. Go away, Like the yeah. blending of those is so good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's yeah. fucking perfect. is what it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you know, he, he, he goes into the palace and at this point the perspective changes. We are playing as somebody else. Uh, and you know, there's this separation happening. He, while living his life as somebody doing this menial job, um, you know, uh, just got, got, got his flesh body who was doing that. And he has this imaginary version that is this great conqueror, this you know, respected hero of this fantasy land. Um, and that disparity, you know, starts causing him pain, you know, like just, uh, just, and, and he's talking to the, to, to, to the, ther- the therapist saying, oh, you know, my imagination is as real as my body. Uh, she says, yeah. oh, it was hard to argue with him. Not because he made a good point, but because like, literally it's like arguing with a wall at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you go up to the throne room, uh, and now you're in, in, uh, somebody else. You are now fully dissociating. Yes. You're somebody else inside the cannery locker room. Yeah. Uh, you walk up behind Lewis as he does his work, you know, and this, uh, kind of, you know, this disparities when they started despising each other, fantasy Lewis and real Lewis despising yeah. each other. Yeah. Um, you walk around the conveyor belt, uh, and look at him from the front going through the motions. Not yeah, doing like, it, you know, not moving anything with his hands, just kind of going just literally it. right hand reaches left, then moves over yeah. left, then moves over. Just literally the motions, not even picking up fish or doing it. Yeah. No fish there. Yeah. yeah. And so you leave him behind. You step up onto the conveyor belt uh, that uh, is leading up and it takes you to the throne room. And now instead of being like an isometric top down kind of perspective, you are first person as the as the fish conveyor belt, you know, takes you down, you know, between all of these heralds and you have the uh, uh, the the ecstatic crowd as you're headed up toward the, uh, you know, the throne for your, uh, you know, coronation. Right. Yes. And the psychiatrist, she thought, you know, thought she could save him. You know, even as he said, oh, they're going to they're going to crown me the king. I love this detail. The, they have a family cat named Molly uh, mm-hmm. and the cat, you know, this Calico cat is there as his advisor. And you just see this big photorealistic cat looming over everybody. Mm-hmm. That's <laughs> yeah. Great. The uh, the conveyor. Uh, I also real quick before we leave this sequence, want to give a shout out to the music. Yes. In it. Uh, that is also really, really great in terms of enforcing the subtle blending. Yes. Like as the medieval fantasy music starts creeping in. Mm-hmm. And integrating with the sound effects and everything like the music in this game in a general sense, I did not find super remarkable mm-hmm. other than this track. Yes. Uh, which really jumped out at me. Mm-hmm. So uh, the conveyor belt takes you up to the end and you walk up to the queen to be crowned uh, and you have to kneel to do so. And it is a very, very uh, filigreed and decorated guillotine. Yeah. Uh, there. It does look very ornamental and ceremonial, but we recognize it as a guillotine. 
Yes. You know, you lay your head down uh, to receive the crown and then slice black screen and confetti. And the letter ends, you know, the rest, I think, you know, you know, your son was a kind man and will will be missed by all who knew him. And uh, fuck. Yeah. Just, you know, I've never had a job as terrible as that, but definitely there were, you know, just there's there's the escape. Yeah. Um, It's hard hard to be as bad as the cannery. Yeah. Like that, that's a really bad articulation of this job. Like yeah. not, no disrespect to canner years. No, but I mean, like it's, it's tre- tremendous repetitive. respect to them. Yeah. Yeah, actually. exactly. Like it's, it's very, very repetitive, monotonous labor that leaves you stinking like a cannery. Yeah. yeah. You know, and just smelling cannery smells all yeah. the time. Uh, it's really rough. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's the curse, you know, or the family focus on death or anything. This is one of the story where one of those things where that gets blurred as well. Right. Yeah. Where like, this was not, um, the grandmother being very inwardly focused on death. This was just straight up modern alienation yeah. and not finding a place for somebody like this, mm-hmm. you know, you know. Uh, got it, got to produce buddy. D- yeah. You know, not saying, like it, it's like, I understand people need jobs and stuff. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of wealth here. I'm not saying they should have just let him be a succession kid. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, but at the same time, like they probably, I mean, they should have taken pot away from him. <laughs> yeah that's I, I, like that's what you know like if that if that's what was stopping him from but then again he you know he probably the the pot was probably just the symptom that they were trying to fix and yeah. ended up guiding him into guiding him into something worse uh yeah the, the the alienation is the big part of this and that's and that's what is you know devastating about this because he's depressed you know yeah. like the his, his little you know it's a four-year dis you know, four, four-year difference you know, and you know, I like I, I relate to that. I'm five years separated from my brother, four and a half or five. You know, and uh, yeah, like that. Uh, you know, again, it's like losing a part of you. It's like Calvin and Sam there. You know, if yeah. that if that if that were to happen, and he just never recovered because he blamed himself, right? You yep. know, just the, just the, he didn't proper he didn't properly process it, and then that put him behind, and the depression and the uh, the grief just compounded. Uh, you know, until all that was left, you know, he didn't find a place. He didn't find meaning. He had to create his own. And that just ended up as left ambiguous to whether he knew what he was doing, you know, yeah. like if he, you know, if he was so in the throes, if he was so in the throes of the, um, uh, uh, of the fantasy that he thought that he was bending down to be coronated. And then the guillotine came down and got him. Or if or there was a moment of clarity. Matter. Yeah. 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 Like, I may as well just, right. You know, I'm no different than these fish. Yeah. At this point. Like yeah. I'm I'm exactly that that quality of part in this fish machine. Yes. May as well just get fished. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 super bleak. Uh yeah. really, really masterfully told. The best told of any of these mm-hmm. stories, like in terms of integrating, like this has to be a game. Yes. It, it, this could not be told uh as any other medium. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. It's uh, the, the whole thing, like this whole game is really great. I, mm-hmm. I really love this game. This is when you said this justifies the, the price of admission, it's the highest high. Yes. For sure. It's the most elegant the game gets. Mm-hmm. Um, I think. Yeah. Um, this was in 2010, and this was the in, the incident, the inciting incident for Dawn to take Edith and uh Edie away from the house in a rush. Yeah. The uh and we are gonna play through that night. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, just just the three of them in this massive house with the majority of it sealed off. Like there's a whole floor yeah. sealed off on this thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. as it turns out, Edie is not gonna go. Right. But, so, um, you know, you, you leave and you go through Dawn's room and then you get up to uh, Edith's room, you know, where they lived when she was a little kid. Right. Uh, and Edith is talking like, you know, I, I understand what we did, but I really wish we didn't leave, you yeah. know, and all that's I would like to have been cannery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, you know, and all that's left is to kind of learn about this last night. Right. And so you grab the pen off of her bed and then you grab the journal that we see at the beginning of this and then she starts writing. Yeah. Uh, we get this overhead view of the dinner table of the last night. Uh, and Edie and Dawn start fighting. You know, uh, Edie's drinking. Uh, yep. Edie says, you know, don't, you shouldn't have wine with your medication. Mm-hmm. You know, Edie sends uh, Edith away trying to, so they can fight. So yeah. there's a gift for her. And we can overhear them arguing. Uh, yeah. Edie says she's not going to go. Right. Like, you know, uh, what you're afraid and what you're afraid of won't just go away because you leave. You right. cannot escape this curse. She's very fatalist. Mm-hmm. How about this? Yeah. And Dawn, you know, just very specifically blames her grandmother 
uh, you know, for causing these deaths, you know, it's your stories that are the, the that are making this happen. Right. You know, so yeah. we're going to leave, you know, we're just like, it's not that we need to get away from the house or this curse. We need to get away from you. Yep. You know? Yeah. And so like Dawn and Edith are going to leave today. And then the van from the nursing home is going to come pick her up in the morning, uh, which yep. is its own sad fate. Yes. Yeah. Um, so you walk out, uh, and we can now get into the other entrance to the library here yeah. as we walk through, uh, Dawn did not know how to get into the library. It's this little hidden passage. Yes. Uh, inside the library is this little storybook that Edie wrote for Edith about the night she was born. Um, yeah. and now we're playing as Edie. Uh, the tide is drawn out like unusually far so yeah. she can walk out to the original sunken house. Yeah. Uh, and you, you wander out there seeing these things are very familiar to you, but are still like preserved. Yes. Uh, and the fog overtakes you. Yeah. And you're just kind of lost and you're walking, you know, kind of at random seeing like old furniture that Edie remembers from when she was a little kid. Right. And we're yeah. getting narration just, you know, uh, about this fantastical thing that she believes happened. Right. Yeah. Uh, in, uh, in some form or fashion. And then you get to the foot of the old house, the one that sank to the bottom of the bay there. Uh, and you know, as you're standing and you look up, a light comes on upstairs. Oh gosh, somebody is living there, but we don't get to see, we don't get to see the rest. Um, yeah. Dawn rips the book away from Edith. You know, she's found out that, uh, like, oh, you know, it's, it's Edie again, trying to put more stories into her, you know? Yeah. It's a flight of fancy. Like none yeah. of that stuff happened. It's yeah. just her, you know, telling these stories, doing this, this, uh, this kind of morbid fascination that probably ultimately would have, would have led to Edie's death. Yeah. There. Uh, so they, they get out, they leave, they drive away. Uh, the idea is that uh, this is the last time she saw Edie, saw her grandmother. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, she was dead when the van came. Probably for from mixing and matching. Yeah. Yeah. Probably from medication and, and wine. Yeah. Um, we fast forward to the last six years with Edith and Dawn. So uh, our narrator and the mother. Yes. Um, they tried to make things work and not talk about it, but Dawn got sick and died. Yeah. Just yeah. died a regular death young of cancer happens all yeah. the time nothing whimsical about it yeah uh and then edith you know says the last finch alive uh last one living she found out she had a baby and now we are the baby in a black void that is the birth canal and i gotta tell you i fucking ripped out of this thing like a bakugan <laughs> like i i beybladed my way out of this shit <laughs> yeah I, I went back and forth i i was once i realized what was happening i was like <laughs> I'm going to be a fucking wiggle worm, man. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to try to be a spinning top on my way out into the world. Uh -huh. uh, Cause how often do you get to like, you get born in the beginning of fallout three, but you don't start in, in the, the womb. Right. You, know, you yeah. don't get to, you, you don't, the, it's just the destination. It's not the journey. <laughs> you don't, you don't see the, 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 the ellipse at the, the ellipse of light at the end of the, yeah. at the end of the ringed tube. Yeah. yeah. I, so I, I just really wanted to like party on my way out, you know, like really kind of slam dance my way into the life. Oh yeah. You're going to break some, you're going to, you're going to break some speed arm. records. Yeah. That's yeah. how it happens. I was, I, was, yeah. I was doing pussy percent. I was, yeah. I was speed running this birth pussy percent. Yeah. No, just uh, I'm, 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 I'm blasting out of this thing. Like it's metal gears, rail gun. Just yeah. straight yeah, into great box. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, I think mm. that, <laughs> I, I think the i think the only the only the other game where i can remember like a like oh you are being birthed kind of thing like this is uh the fucking sonic dream collection oh yeah yeah that happens and i also <laughs> party in that one yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like, it's real fun to get rowdy style like i'm gonna get birth animal style <laughs> you know <laughs> um, oh gosh make it rowdy yeah, and so, you know, and so the you know, the white light overtakes you, and we get the end of this journal, and it's saying, you know, this journal was supposed to be for you, but now I hope you never see it. Uh, you know, all that she wants as she's writing this, you know, this the, the, this missive to her unborn child, all that she wants is to is, is to meet this child and you know tell all the stories herself, right? Yep. And then kind of the gut punch line is, but I guess if you're reading this now, things didn't work out that way. She yeah. died in childbirth. She lightning crashes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she lightning crashed did. Yeah. Uh, and it ends with us putting, uh, you know, she said, ask the child not to be sad. Um, and you see her, the child closing the diary and putting on the mother's headstone on the yeah. island. 
died uh, 2017. And then the kid uh, steps on a rake and dies because he went down <laughs> yep. to the cursed island. <laughs> yeah. They don't show that, but it's really implied. Uh, going yeah. to this death trap was probably not smart. Probably not. Yeah. Could have mailed it to the tomb. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know what I would have done instead of this, but I would not have set foot on Death Island. Probably not. Kind of seems yeah. a little, it seems a little like you wouldn't want to do that. Feet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's what remains of Edith Finch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Great game. Yep. Uh, great game. Absolutely bite size. Uh, really sad. Really deftly told. Um, really great use of your time. Yeah, no, it's uh, I'm glad that you enjoyed it because I mean, when I went back to it, uh, it's more uneven than I remembered it being, you know, like mm-hmm. I got to the second, you know, the, the, the second epistle or whatever it is. And like, it's just the, the viewfinder. I'm like, oh, right. Not all of these are as good as the Lewis one. Yeah, yeah. that's why that's why I don't remember them. But like each of them is it, like it, it explores this idea and this theme in a bunch of different ways and ends up telling a really interesting story about all the members of these family all the members of this family right it's it's such a uh it's so bite size yeah like the 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 lack of relative lack in terms of number of high highs would make a difference in a game twice as long as this yes yeah. or you know the fact that it is a movie that mm-hmm. has like a climax like this and adds up to an overwhelming feeling like it works really well in aggregate mm-hmm. makes it work yeah. You know, like this ends up weirdly, it's it's not the intent and it's not the most important takeaway of this this game, but like a tertiary takeaway is that games should be the length that their stories support. Yeah. Um, and this game is perfect at that. Yeah. Like this game should not be longer or shorter than it is. Mm-hmm. Uh it there's nothing that's padding, there's nothing that feels like it doesn't need to be there, there's nothing that feels like it's it's missing. It's all you appropriate. Know? Yeah. It's all appropriate. Like this is the length of story, length of time and the medium to tell this story. Mm-hmm. It's a really, really well called shot. Yeah. You know, and other walking Sims that I ultimately end up liking a little bit more, mm-hmm. you know, uh, like I think about something like Soma, which is not quite a walking Sim, but you know what I mean? Pretty close. Uh, yeah. Pretty close. Um, people will say like, that should be more of a walking Sim, right? Like mm-hmm. that should be like have fewer monsters and stuff like that. There are notes. Like you have, you have notes for Soma. Like I mm-hmm. like Soma a little bit more, but there are notes or things I would yeah. change. Yeah. This is this weird form of like a very, very lowercase P soft form of perfection. Mm-hmm. Like it's not a perfect game because the heights that it climbs are not that high and its aims are not that high, but it is perfect in that it's like perfectly sound. It's like a, a perfect square it know, is, or a perfect circle. It is perfectly expressed. Let's yes. say that. Yeah, for for what it is, it actually expresses it really, really well yeah. in a way that's really impressive to me. Yeah, um, yeah I really liked it. Mm-hmm. So good ass game. Wonderful way to start the year. Yeah, great way to start the year. Also, a good way to start the year. Uh, Hexen or Heretic. <laughs> Who knows about Hexen? Yeah. Um, the uh, the uh, so yeah. If you have anything to say about this game. What mm-hmm. remains to be to Finch, uh, or if you have anything to say about Heretic or Hades, please send us a message at duckfeed.tv slash contact by January 15th. Uh, yeah, the deadline is always the 15th of the month, um, and uh, which means that if you have thoughts about February's games, uh, you write in by the 15th. Those games are Luca, uh, Born of a dream. dream. There we go. Yes. Luca, Born of a Dream. Uh, that's a PC uh, uh, Metroidvania. Also a very emotional story from what I understand. Um, the second game is citizen, citizen sleeper. Uh, what I'm led to believe is one of the best games of 2022. Uh, mm-hmm. and then our premium episode, uh, for that month is going to be subnautica, the underwater, uh, survival game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's going to be, it's a motion month. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be real fun. Uh, we have cool announcements. We have cool stuff coming up. Everything that, uh, we have on the schedule right now is, is stuff that I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if you are a non-white, non-straight, non-cis dude, and you have a project you'd like to signal boost, please send me an email at gary at duckfeed.tv. Uh, make sure you include, uh, current, uh, kind of contact information for how to find your thing. Uh, this episode talking about something called the gray muzzle archives. Uh, this is a podcast show about interviewing members in the furry fandom who are older. Mm. Uh, you know, kind of learning about what it was like to be, uh, this kind of like, uh, their words, not mine, uh, queer nerd. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know I can, I can say queer, but I always feel a little weird about it. Uh, their words, yeah. a queer nerd in the pre-internet era, mm-hmm. uh, there. So that rules, uh, yeah, it, it's yeah. pretty neat. Like I'm going to say in full disclosure. So like 
the you try to get uh as you get older you try to become a better person one of the things that i i try to do is become more understanding of things mm-hmm. i have no hatred in my heart uh for furries i used to make all of the internet jokes mm-hmm. uh, that everyone made i was very guilty of that it's still something that i have found a hard time finding like an explainer for I guess like not that that's the most important thing and nobody owes uh-huh. me an explanation, but I'm curious about it and I don't, I don't get it. There's a, and not very, in a mean way, you know, like again, I cannot stress enough. No hate. Yeah. I just don't like, I want to know more. I want to understand. Yeah. It. Um, I, th- th- this, this is not related to the work, uh, that we're uh, highlighting, but there is, uh, the down the rabbit hole, that YouTube channel did a very good kind of primer on the history of furries. It goes way back. Like just, nice. uh, yeah. Yeah. So. And yeah, I knew about that for sure. That it's it's a lot older than than one might think. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is real cool. Mm-hmm. The idea of uh so Jay does this. Um their website right now, it's kind of it's host on like a shows.acast thing. Mm-hmm. If you just Google the gray muzzle archives, it mm-hmm. pops up. Yeah. Uh that's how I would do it. Cool. Um episode three just came out about a week ago. All right. Um talking about the nineties. Uh yeah. so just these kind of different pre-internet eras. Uh that's fascinating to me. Yes. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm real curious. So, it, it's, uh, check it out. It's real cool to get those perspectives committed, uh, to some kind of format because that goes away. You yeah, know, absolutely. you want to get the stories down. Yeah. And, and if you're, if you're, even if you are not uh, a part of that community, if you have curiosity, this seems like a great way to learn, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and why wouldn't you want to learn? Yeah. Like uh, about stuff. Um, so yeah, so, uh, please send me uh, a message if you have something you'd like to hear us bump. Um, if you like us, go to patreon.com slash duckfeed TV and uh five dollars a month gets you uh bonus episodes of this show. Uh mm-hmm. so such as our Hades episode, our Subnautica episode, all the episodes we did last year. Uh this just gets more valuable as mm-hmm. you go. Gives you every episode of Unfilmable. Yeah. Um the uh ten dollars a month gives you a little show that we're both real proud of called Adaptation Decay. Yeah. Which we've hidden some of our best episode like hidden isn't the right word we just put really good stuff there like that show is weirdly consistently like one of the best things we do all month Uh uh-huh uh it's real fun and real funny i think yeah yeah uh i mean they're they're just we're recording this in december but the uh, we've got the elf bowling episode before that we had the sims sparked like uh like a couple of bangers in a row if we can say so ourselves yes uh that i i think are really funny and worth your time no. Uh, if you don't know about the elf bowling movie, uh, it's real out there. It's worth knowing <laughs> about. That's also where joysticks came into my life. Yeah. Like there, there's, it's a great show. Uh, <laughs> I'm not here to tell you what $10 should be worth to you, but like mm-hmm. that is a, I'm proud of it. That is a great show. We designed the campaign so that if somebody wants to like go up to $10, get all the stuff and then bump back down, that's fine. You know, like, you know, it's, it's, it's there. Obviously we'd it's love fine. if you stuck around. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. But yeah, no, it's uh, that th- th- that is there for you, and you can pop in every once in a while and get the new stuff. It's you know, yeah, it's there D- to treat treat our campaign however you would like to, aside from giving it all away to give it a go. Yeah, all. please don't put oh. it up on torrent sites. Yes, uh, and if you do, don't tell me about it like a weirdo. Yeah, um, <laughs> like that one the, guy. <laughs> like that one yeah. guy. Like, uh, also, we're recording this before all this stuff gets finalized. But by the time you hear this, we're adding some more stuff to that tier. Yes. So we want to make that more attractive because we want more people to listen to Adaptation Decay. Mm-hmm. So. Check out that. Announce what we have already have made, probably. Mm-hmm. I think um, that's yeah. No, I think I, th- I think that's all the stuff. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening. Hope your new year went well. Um, I hope you had fun and are safe. Hope no uh, Finch family style uh, hijinks happened. Um, oh, very much. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Until next time, what should they watch out for? Uh, until t- next time, uh, move your sea set, <laughs> move your swing set further from the sea. <laughs> Yeah. Or like not we not close to a fire, not close to a spike pit. Yeah. Like I don't know. <laughs> Get some OSHA on that shit. <laughs> oh gosh. Fun app.